lost. Reese Lloyd to kick off for Minnesota. And he booms one into the end zone. Carl Tabb takes the knee about seven yards deep. John Navarre, the fifth-year senior, four-year starter. He and Rick Leach, the only quarterbacks to start four season openers at quarterback at the University of Michigan. And as you guys were discussing, he gets a lot of criticism. A lot of the numbers are good, but the big number that you guys reflected on during the opening, un, uh, winless on the road against ranked teams. Yeah, I don't know how justified the criticism is. This team is not supposed to throw the ball 55 times a game. That's not John Navarre's style with this offense. Michigan starts on the ground in a good hole for Chris Perry. Out to the 27 for a gain of seven. The safety, Eli Ward, made the tackle. The rest of the skill position players on offense for Michigan, Dudley, a blocking fullback. Braylon Edwards, one of the best receivers in Michigan history. And a very talented offensive line. And a veteran group as well. On second and three, it's Perry again. Very close to the first down at the 30-yard line. Mark Losley made the tackle. He's the starting defensive end with Paul Nixon at the other end. Montgomery and Reed in the middle. Their leading tacklers are Terrence Campbell and Ben West. Kyle McKenzie, the nephew of Reggie McKenzie, the other linebacker. And in the secondary, Justin Fraley has come on in recent weeks. He was a reserve at the beginning of the season. But has started the last two games and has had an interception in each game. Third down and an inch. And Navarre uses that 6-6 six, six frame to pick up the first down. Well, this is going to be root hog heaven for Michigan. This is what they're going to want to do. They're going to want to establish the running game, especially between the tackles. They love pulling the big guy, David Boss, 75. They're going to run between the tackles. Perry will start there, may bounce it outside. Incumbent on the 2D tackles, Anthony Montgomery and Daryl Reed for Minnesota to at least eat up blocks, Rod, and, well, and let the linebackers get in the play. Well, they have to. When they've played on the road, their two losses this year, they were taken out of their style of play. First and 10. Perry took the pitch. Poor tackling by Minnesota. And Perry all the way out near midfield, down at the 47. A 15-yard run, Eli Ward, the safety again, called upon to make the tackle. A great job again, this O-line. Look at their block, and the key is the O-line. They're on their feet downfield. The big block there, right guard Matt Lentz threw it. About five yards downfield, these guys are 310, 315. They stay on their feet and get in the face of the defenders and lock on. Four plays, four running plays. Can we see a theme? Perry. Dancing out across midfield. Well, this makes sense, guys. We looked at the results. But both losses for Michigan on the road, and in both games, for whatever reason, they got very pass-happy through the ball a lot more than they did in the four victories all at home. Well, I think they got away from the run a lot sooner than they wanted in both of those losses. Oregon kind of took them out yeah, of the game. Score they got that, yeah, the score But then against Iowa, they still threw the ball 49 times, and that's not the way Michigan plays the game. John Navarre is at his best when he throws it 28 or 30 times, not 49. He threw for a school record 389 yards last week in the loss at Iowa. Perry again stopped short of the first down at the 47. He'll need four on third down to move the chains. And here's what we're talking about with John Navarre. In his 25 wins as a starter, he averages 28 throws a game. In those losses, 41. Now, it tells you a little bit that, okay, they've had to throw the ball, right. but it also tells you something about play selection. They felt the need to use him more. He's like a pitcher with a pitch count. You get over 30, it's not so good. Will this be the first pass for Michigan? On third down and four. Navarre with time, throws short of a first down. Braylon Edwards, the catch, coming across the middle. But he was driven back 
by Ben West, the former walk-on, who earned a scholarship after his second year in the program. Now a fifth-year senior. Here comes the punting no, unit. No, 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 I don't think so. Two yards, you know what? They've been running the ball successfully. I tell you what, I, I think this is a good call. Well, every, every Michigan fan is going, not the punt team, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll explain that when they first bring out the punt team, but I think this is a good call. They've had luck running the ball. Look, they're going to pass it here, but I'll tell you what, I, I, I would not I would think they'd run. Oh, quick punt. You're right, Sean. <laughs> and a nice job done by Navarre, but they don't get a good bounce, and it goes into the end zone. Michigan's had a lot of problems punting the football in recent weeks, particularly last week at Iowa. Well, they go in a formation that is a shotgun, a short punt formation. Navarre gets rid of it. Nobody back from Minnesota because they had to play for the fourth down play. I'd have gone for it. I'd have gone for it. They were running the ball well. So here comes Minnesota on offense. One of the leading rushing teams in the nation. Led by Assad Abdul Khalik, the senior from Elizabeth, New Jersey. And like Navarre, a four-year starter. He hands off to Thomas Tape. Biggest and most powerful of a quartet of backs we'll see, including Marion Barber the third. Ellerson and Hosack have big playability on the outside. It's a young and improving offensive line. The best of the group is the Remington Award candidate at center, Greg Esslinger. He started last year as a true freshman. To pay this time, stop for a loss. Carl Diggs, one of the Michigan captains, made the tackle. Up front, the veteran group, three seniors and a junior, Stevens, Hoyer, Bowman, and Massey. Diggs with Reed and Woods, an emerging playmaker, and outside linebacker. They had questions whether Lasour would play tonight. Shazer, Jackson, and Curry in the secondary. And at the moment, we do not see Lasour on the field. Third down at eight. Unusual long yardage situation, but the Gophers convert. They are 60% for the year on third down conversions. If you're looking for reasons why they're 6 0, oh, that's one of the biggest. Usually they're in short yardage to convert. That time they picked up 14 on third down and eight. 60%. Rod, that, that's an incredible number for third down conversion. 60%. What do you look for? Most teams about 42, 43% oh. is pretty good. Pretty that, average. that would be great. You see, probably most teams in the mid 30s. Jared Ellerson, the 14-yard gain. He had the 96-yard touchdown reception last week that got them going at Northwestern after they were down 14 to nothing. The pass thrown to Marion Barber. Incomplete. Well, that's a big game for Minnesota, obviously, and as we talked to players in the last day or so, including Abdul Khalif, Khalif, he said he was nervous. He started thinking about the game Monday. He, he was getting excited about it and all the other players as well. And you want to control your emotions when you're playing a game of this big, Mike. You see some guys getting tired early in the game wondering why they're so tired. It's because they're very hyped up. You mentioned the record day last week for Navarre. The same was true for Abdul Khalik. As his yardage total last week at Northwestern. The highest of his career. Jared Ellerson took the ball. We mentioned his big playability. We tried to find a number of ways to get him the ball. Pat Massey made the tackle. There are the career best numbers in just 17 pass attempts. He's averaging under 15 attempts per game. This is a team that runs the football yeah. with regularity and success. And they run it differently. They'll run it up the gut. They'll sweep it. They'll reverse it. They'll throw the speed option in there. Not the sproption like we talked about. No. Uh, you know, with uh, last <laughs> week. Out in the flat, it's Marion Barber, taken down by Marlon Jackson. But Barber has the first down out near midfield at the 47-yard line. He's Marion Barber the third. His dad played on the Gopher team in 1977 that beat Michigan, one of two Minnesota victories in the last 33 meetings head-to-head -head with the Wolverines. They had three receptions coming into tonight's game. He was split out that time. Nice play to get him the ball in space. Barber's a sophomore. 
Here's a true freshman, Lawrence Maroney. And he carries into Michigan territory and down at the 46. A gain of seven. Marcus Curry made the tackle. Well, there you see that Minnesota will use four running backs, and they're all a little bit different. Barber is the, the main guy, the slasher. To pay, he's a guy that's a hammer, but, but look at the average he gets. Unreal. Yeah, I mean, that's great running. 13 touchdowns isn't too bad either for Barber, huh? One more, and he's got the season record. He's tied for the single season record for rushing touchdowns right now. Here's to pay again. And he battles for yardage after picking up the first down. They'll give him forward progress to the 39. First down, Minnesota, an impressive opening drive for the Gophers. Now, here's what's interesting. Anytime, guys, we're doing games, you see games nowadays, you talk about the offensive line. He's 320, 315, 330. You look on this old line, not one guy over 300 pounds. I was talking to co-offensive coordinator Mitch Browning, who also coaches the tight ends and tackles. They had the Denver Bronco philosophy. They don't want the big guys. They want the smaller guys, small, 290, 295, zone blocking, getting on their feet, pulling, and opening holes. Marion Barber, first down and more inside the 25, a late flag thrown back at the 26-yard line. And a holding call will negate a 13-yard run. Might have been against Jared Ellerson, the wide receiver, trying to block downfield. Holding, offense, 10 yards, still first down. When you run as much as they do, that's exactly what your wide receivers, Sean, are asked to do. They have to block downfield. Yeah, but not hold. Well, <laughs> hey, he just didn't no, do no. it right. He just did. Obviously, didn't his hands have his hands on the inside, but you don't get caught. A little the right technique there. Yeah, obviously, the proper block is what you want to do, but you know, you have to get away. <laughs> it's I from the spot of the foul, so the ball is at the 36, setting up a first down and seven. Midway through the first quarter, no score, the play clock running out, and it has expired. No whistle, though. Well, the play clock's been on zero for forever, and finally it is spotted by the officials. Yeah, about three seconds too yeah. late. It wasn't just what you saw. We are synced up with the stadium clock. The stadium clock was also at zero for several seconds before the flag was finally thrown. There was a malfunction with the play clock. The play clock will be reset. The down will be replayed. First down. And yeah, the malfunction was it ran out and no one noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Abdul Khalid, he didn't think that it had run out because when it was down to zero, yeah. he started changing, changing the play. play yeah. well, we talk about the success of this Minnesota rushing attack, and you figure sooner or later they're going to pile eight men up on the box, the other team. But Minnesota says no, that isn't necessarily the case. We might stay in a run, but it's Abdul Khalid who does a lot of the line of scrimmage yep. to get them to different runs, different directions, run the pass, sometimes pass to run. Here's Barber running. First down. Down at the 27-yard line. Well, you know, Minnesota's linemen are doing a good job, Mike, of cutting off the inside linebackers. They're not letting them get to the outside to make play. You watch the work of the center. You watch how they get out. You see big number 68, Mark Sederstrom, getting out there, cutting off linebacker. That makes your outside run really effective. Did you see Ellerson out there? Got a block that time, and when the guy was getting away from it, he let go. <laughs> he learned his lesson. No more holding. <laughs> and a nine-yard gain for Barber. 11th play of the drive. Short drop by Abdul Khalid. Over the middle and top down to the 20-yard line. Goes the backup tight end, Matt Spaeth. They play a lot of two tight end sets, so you'll see Spaeth a lot, although the other tight end, Ben Uchek, is more frequently a receiving target. They like this kid. I was talking to, when I was talking to Mitch Brown, he's listed at 6'6". He thinks he's more 6'7", 6'8". He said he doesn't run as well as Utech runs, but, you know, he's a young kid and says maybe if he grows too much, he may find himself on the old line. His fifth catch of the year. There's Barber inside the 10. Touchdown!
excellent job of blocking by the old line there's got to be some great enthusiasm there they're not blowing people off the ball they're walling them off great job the back getting through jumping and good blocks downfield as well reese lloyd adds the extra point minnesota's made 117 consecutive pats now a 20-yard touchdown run by Marion Barber III. Caps an 80-yard drive in 12 plays for undefeated Minnesota. Marion Barber with a 20-yard touchdown run, and Minnesota has the early 7-0 lead. Excellent blocking again, the zone blocking. Here's Ryan Melander, Mark Sederstrom here. Here's the hole. Marlon Jackson comes and does a shoulder tackle, awful tackle, but look at the seal right in the middle there. Lawrence Reed over pursues a bit. Marlon Jackson has got to wrap up when he comes across and make that tackle. Again, excellent blocking on the old line. They're not going to, again, they're not going to pull you off the line of scrimmage. They're going to position block on you. The hole will be open for a second or so, and the backs are through. The offensive line looks for real. Oh, they sure do. Talk about Minnesota, whether they're real or not, Sean. The offensive line certainly looks for real. And there's the record all by himself now. 14th rushing touchdown of the season for Marion Barber III. He had shared the record with Daryl Thompson, one of the all-time greats here in Minnesota. Now their radio commentator and Jim Perkins, who played here in the mid-70s. Lloyd Boom going out of the end zone. Here's Alex Flanagan. Hey, Sean, the older barber was supposed to be here tonight, but Marion's 17-year-old brother plays high school football. He's actually coming to play here at Minnesota next year. So parents, Karen and Marion, split the duties. Uh, they told me they kind of flipped a coin, but you'll see throughout the night, Karen is on the cell phone. She is keeping Marion, Marion the third's dad, up to date all night and just told him about that score, you guys. <laughs> what did we do without cell phones? You can get a connection in here. <laughs> That's probably difficult. The Barbers have Michigan roots. Marion, the dad, was from Detroit. Was recruited by Michigan, but came here to play at Minnesota back in the 70s. Braylon Edwards, the intended target, and Yuki Dozier had the coverage. And there's the list that we spoke of a moment ago. Daryl Thompson is in the next booth doing the Minnesota radio. I think, he's and he, I think he could still play. I can't say that about you two guys. <laughs> Daryl Thompson looks like he could still play. He's got 14. This is game seven, guys. I think, think he, he'll, think he'll score add again. to a little bit. He'll score again. What do you mean we can't play, Sean? What is that all about? And he wasn't who have retained the <laughs> physique. And necessary he was, to he wasn't in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Edwards again. Spinning back, trying to get extra yardage, but he's gang tackled at the 26, led by Kyle McKenzie. Now bring up third down and four. We talk about good genes. Marion Barber has them, and Kyle McKenzie does as well. His uncle Reggie McKenzie, the great Buffalo Bill. And he also has a brother who's playing for the Chicago Bears, Keith McKenzie. Third down and four. A four-man rush. Navarre throws, and it's incomplete. We had Jason Avant coming open. Justin Isom, a safety, had the coverage. But the pass was a little bit short. And another punt upcoming, and this time it will be the regular punting unit. Adam Finley back in there. They used Garrett Rivas, the field goal kicker for some punting duties last week at Iowa, not successfully. And they've got that same weird formation they used last week with three protectors. And look at the wide splits with the linemen. That's an area that Minnesota can attack. There's a flag down on the line of scrimmage. Marion Barber back for the punt. He let it bounce, and it takes a great roll for Michigan. And if that's a penalty against Minnesota at the line, It'll be a first down for the Wolverines, a 53-yard punt. But it's against Michigan. We should point out that the Wolverines do not have special teams coordinator Jim Bocker here tonight. He is not with the team for personal reasons. That's all we know about the situation. But Lloyd Carr and the assistant coaches sharing the responsibilities. Right. They all have different assignments, and that's standard. Normally, normally how it is anyway, exactly right. Well, the one change you saw with that punt formation there, they did not run the punter 
to the right side to kick the ball like they did last week. They used the personal protectors, all three of them, and they just kicked it straight away that time. Right, what it was last week that uh, Rivas was in punting and he would take the snap and he would run to his right. The option was kick, but if the run was there and you could go somewhere with it, go ahead and run, and it uh, didn't work too well all uh, the time. Yeah, they got one blocked, at least one. They came after him, and Finley just did get it off. Barber with running room. Knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Blown out by Lamar Woodley. A 33-yard punt and a 13-yard return. Well, they fired up for Minnesota football. And very excited tonight about this start for Coach Glenn Mason. He couldn't have envisioned anything much better than what he's seen so far. Yeah, but he wanted to see his rushing offense, and he got it with a variety of players. Ellerson on a reverse. That's one way to do it. When you come in with Marion, get it inside. And then how about to pay up the center and then finish it all off with Marion Barber, who busted a big tackle attempt by Jackson to get into the end zone. Great field position from the Michigan 42. Play action pass by Abdul Khalif. He's going deep for Hosack. Incomplete. <laughs> right along the sideline. He was open. Marcus Curry had the coverage. And it was very nearly a completion inside the five. What a great play call that was. You just ran the ball down there, throw it to now. You go to the single receiver side. Hosack gets turned around a little bit, gets his hands on it. Well, they got the matchup they wanted. They were looking for single coverage with Curry and Hozak. You see Abdul Khalid st stand in there, but they got that big matchup, yep. a difference of about six inches. Second and 10. Tepe could not turn the corner, no gain on the play. Lawrence Reed made the tackle, the middle linebacker. And it'll be third down and 10. Reed had a team high eight tackles last week at Iowa. He's tied with Pierre Woods for the team leading tackles for the year entering tonight's game. And it's interesting when you take the different way to take on blocks for a linebacker. When you have that big old line, you have to use that form. You have to take them on, smash mouth a little bit. With this line, they're going for position. He's got to use his speed a little more, maybe come underneath some blocks and make the tackle or definitely beat him before he gets walled off. Different kind of blocking for him. Three receivers and to pay is the lone back. On third and ten, the option. Abdul tackled after a two-yard gain by Larry Stevens. So it'll be fourth and eight, and Glenn Mason's going to send the punting team on. Well, Khalid told us yesterday he needed to be willing to live to punt. He didn't want to get himself into a bad situation. He didn't like the play. He checked to something and did not pitch that ball to try to make a big play. He was willing to live with punting the ball. He paid for it a little bit. Larry Stevens gave a nice shot. Reese Lloyd from Dover, England, came to this country at age 15 when his dad, Bryn, who's a soccer coach, got a coaching job coaching a club team and a high school team. Little pooch punt angled for the corner and rolls into the end zone. 317 left in the first quarter. Minnesota leads Michigan 7-0. samples yeah. <laughs> not tonight anyway it's a good looking twenty dollar bill though is yep, it sure is here's michigan thoroughly outplayed to this point but down just seven to nothing and it's chris perry for a yard and that's it eli ward their big hitter in the secondary came flying up from his safety spot to make the tackle well in order to stop michigan's run game mike you've got to get that guard or that offensive tackle that comes around to kick out off that double team, and they stuffed him right in the hole that time. And that's Dave Boss, big 315 pounder. He'll do a lot of the pulling. They bring Ward up the safety, bring another one up in the box to stop the run. Greg Hudson, the defensive coordinator, talked about Ward needed to have a big game against this balanced Michigan attack. So far, he has. That could be a flag for a late hit. There is no flag. Andy Minnery, the tight end. Got knocked down well after the ball fell incomplete. Terrence Campbell knocked him down. Well, you'll see the late hit there, right? 
Well, that's long gone. Oh, that's way after. Yeah, yeah you way can't do after. that. That's, that's that, 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 that'll cost you down the road. That, that's just a dumb play there. But you know what? It was all because the pass was a bad one. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Navarre not on right now. Saw Greg Hudson, the defensive coordinator. Third down and nine. Navar two out of five for eight yards. Flush from the pocket, breakdown in the coverage. Wide open is Tyler Ecker, their third string tight end, and Terrence Campbell knocked him out of bounds at the 44. First down, Michigan, a gain of 23, and that's not what Greg Hudson had in mind. John Navarre has received so much criticism, he's almost become immune to it. That time, he moves out of the pocket, and he puts the ball on the money. But a couple of throws earlier, guys, he was way off. And if you sampled the chat rooms and read the papers out of Ann Arbor during the week, he took a lot of heat from fans and the media. Well, some media members, writers in particular in Ann Arbor, talk about how he might be the most criticized player in Michigan history. Chris Perry, the ball carrier, a gain of three, never criticized as Reese Davis. Well, thank you, Sean. At least I do my very best not to be. Certainly nobody's going to criticize TCU's tie gun against South Florida. Game going on over on ESPN2. Beautifully thrown ball to Corey Rogers and the Horned Frogs trying to stay unbeaten on top of the Bulls by seven. Another one of those non-BCS conference schools in the yep. top 20 trying to make a case for themselves this year. They, they played well against the BCS schools. Second and seven. Perry, lots of running room. First down, Michigan. And he's into Minnesota territory at the 44-yard line. Again, Eli Ward made the tackle with help from Yuki Dozier. Michigan needs to stay with it. Stay with the run. You see they're getting stuffed a couple of times, but just stay with it. Keep pounding, keep pounding. This is the difference in O-lines. Again, Michigan's is big, so we'll see if it has an effect later in the game. Third quarter, fourth quarter, if they start to wear on the defense a little bit. Play clock at four. Lavar on first and ten in trouble. Got it off. Complete for a short gain. Eric Clark had the pressure on. And it was Andy Minnery, the tight end, with just his second catch of the year. He's a senior from Hamilton, Ohio. Remember this play for later. I don't think Navarre should have thrown this ball. He's under duress, and he throws it into coverage. Now, later in the game, that could be a problem. That's a ball, Mike, you throw away. There's nothing that good can come of this if you keep thinking you can make plays like that when you're under duress and there's good coverage in the middle of the field. And he is going to have some pressure on tonight. Minnesota with 14 sacks, they will get in his face. Second and six in the final seconds of the first quarter. Perry dropped for a loss, breaking through Terrence Campbell, the sophomore from Atlanta. He's been their big playmaker all season long. Yeah, you don't see many linebackers, 200 pounds, and I mean, 200 pounds, maybe with some weights in his yeah, pants. He ain't even no. 200 pounds. He's not close to that. But what an athlete this kid is. They call it stick, understandably <laughs> so. It's less than 200 pounds. One quarter played in Minneapolis. Undefeated Minnesota leads 7 0. Huge game. Big, big time game. Some teams get a chance to get back in the spotlight. Bob, Bobby Bowden and Florida State haven't been out long. But he's going to really get back into it with a win over Miami. On the 45, third down and 10 for Michigan. The bars pass complete. Steve Breston. Short of the first down as he went out of bounds. Marked at the 40-yard line. Tremaine Banks chased him out. Tremaine's a redshirt freshman. Smart coverage. Good call by Greg Hudson, the defensive coordinator. Play back, give me the underneath thing, and say, you know, catch it. We're just not going to give you 10 yards. I don't know about you, but every time the Michigan punt team comes on the field, I, I start going, oh, what's going to happen now? They don't have the three back this time. It's a little different. <laughs> and much tighter along the line as well. Finley does a good job. Gets it out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Ugly, yet effective. 29-yard <laughs> punt. Lloyd Carr, take that all day. Well, I'll tell you, so for Minnesota, the huge game that it is, you wondered, 
you know, where the players are going to get the big eyes, you know, where they're going to see those helmets and say, uh-oh, you know, we have a lot riding on this game. We're in the national scene. We can really jump on center stage here. And I think they've answered, it the, the, at least at the beginning of the game, the question pretty well. Well, you remember what it's like. You get in a game like this, and as you go through warm-ups, you get so yes. exhausted that you think you can't play the yep. whole game because you're so excited. From the 11, Marion Barber came in motion, but they handed it to Thomas to pay. He's out to the 13, a gain of two. Here's Reese. Our high school showcase game of the week takes us to Florida. Lincoln from Tallahassee, number six in the USA Today poll. That's him in the wide against North Florida Christian. That quarterback, Joe Bowsman. Michigan fans pay attention. An Ohio State commitment. Finding Fred Rouse in Lincoln, Tallahassee. He's up 27 0. That's all Ohio State needs with another big time receiver who's over six feet tall. And that quarterback, <laughs> that quarterback looks like he's a good sized kid. Tell me about it. Second and seven. Thomas to pay. Stopped at the 14 yard line. To pay, the fifth year senior, grew up playing soccer in Liberia. His family moved to this country when he was nine years old. He lived in the Twin Cities area. His sister is still in Liberia. She's a student in Winifred. And obviously a lot going on in that country. Great unrest. They're concerned and trying to get the sister Winifred back here. And he, but he says later on, down, down the road, he wants to go back. Mm -hmm. He said he thinks, out, he thinks he's missed out on a lot by not being there and wants to end up back there. Third down and seven. 12 running plays called by Minnesota. Just five passes so far. That's standard for the Gophers. Abdul Khalid. Close to the first down. He appears to have it across the 21. Marlon Jackson. The safety converted corner made the tackle. Very smart play. He looked to his right. He looked for his tight end, UTEP, and he wasn't there. He saw that he was tied up with a couple of guys near him, and he pulled the ball down. Smart play, avoided a turnover by not throwing the football. Nice, quick decision. That's been the thing that's killed him in the past, and he admits it. He's been prone to the big mistake, yep. particularly in the big game. That's why he's gotten the criticism we talked about. Coaches say he's a much better decision maker, and Assad says that himself. Here's Barber. Out near another first down. He got nine on first and ten. Pat Massey. Made the tackle with help from Leon Hall. Hall, the reserve cornerback, playing tonight without Jeremy Lasur on the field. You know, Minnesota runs, you know, the outside zone play an awful lot. And they get you going with that, and then they get their tight end, UTEC, and they drag him across the field. There's Lasur. Thomas to pay on second and short. Out to the 35 for a first down for Minnesota. It, it's amazing this running game. Last year, to, to pay was part of a twosome. He and Terry Jackson both gained over 900 yards. Today, Minnesota and West Virginia were the only two teams in the country to have two backs over 900 yards for uh, West Virginia. It was Avon Coburn and uh, Quincy Wilson, Ot Otis Wilson's kid. But Terry Jackson and Thomas to pay, they're not even starting. That's Marion Barber's job, so it's it's amazing the depth they have. Minnesota third in the nation in rushing, fifth in scoring. They're number one in the Big Ten in scoring. Abdul Khalid showing his escape ability. And he spins there another first down all the way to the 44-yard line. Looks to be a half yard short. Marlon Jackson made the tackle for Michigan. We talked about the drag play to UTEC, the tight end. That's what he's looking for right there. And he pulls it down because UTEC was covered. And now you see him making another positive play, Mike, without letting something negative happen when it easily could have happened had he thrown the ball. You get a quarterback that can do that, it makes your D lineman, and I've been there, look like, we call him getting Frankenstein. <laughs> you get your ankles broke, you look like Frankenstein trying to tackle him as he just spins and goes by you. That's a great move. That didn't happen to you. Oh, that broke so many ankles. Second and less than one. And Tepay lost about a half yard. We'll check that. Marion Barber. Larry Stevens penetrated the offensive line and 
Made the tackle. We saw Glenn Mason. It's not very important to him, but he has a chance for a milestone tonight. A win would be the 100th of his career. And when you coach it, Kent State, Kansas, and Minnesota, as yep. he has, you're doing a nice job to get to 100 wins. As he said, a lot of times you're selling insurance at those places before you have a chance to get to 100 <laughs> wins. Uh, he's selling a running game tonight, and it's we're, everybody's buying it right now. Third and one. Barber following to pay. Running room in the corner. Marion Barber. Out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. They'll mark him out at the 11, chased out by Leon Hall. When you can have a lead blocker like you did in Tepay, hook the man you're blocking. Hook him. I mean, that's a cardinal sin on defense. You cannot get hooked. Tepay does it. Blocks the inside man trying to come out. You've got to be able to come across the face. They lose contain, and he frees him up. Hey, this is Michigan, man. This is Michigan that Minnesota is just running over. They're spreading them and running. Spreading them and running. 45-yard gain for Barber on the sidelines to catch his breath. 96 yards rushing already in 20 minutes of action for Marion Barber. First and 10 from the 11. Lawrence Maroney. Now you're wondering, why does a true freshman have to play? And the plan when the season started was that he wouldn't play the preseason practice with Jackson and Barber to pay ahead of him. But Glenn Mason told us it was the other running backs who said to Coach Mason, hey, this guy's good. Get him. We'll give up some of our time to get him on the field. He can help us win this year. Don't redshirt him. Yeah, that, that's unique. You would expect that with four guys trying to carry the ball, you'd have some bickering going on, but well, there hasn't been any of that. What they said is this kid took all the hits at fall camp. They said, and then when he got his chance in some games, he ran well, and he deserves the carries he's getting. Tenth play of the drive, second and seven. Here's Maroney again. Nobody in a white shirt near him. Touchdown, Minnesota. There are, there are a couple of ways you get beat running the ball, guys. It's either getting punched in the mouth and run over or position blocked where they're on you like flypaper, and you just can't get off them. It's so frustrating. You want to punch them, but you can't get off of them. They just kind of engulf you, and that's exactly what Minnesota's doing. Reese Lloyd adds the extra point. Maroney, the freshman, having an 89 yard drive. Ten plays, five and a half minutes off the clock, 14 nothing. 14 nothing, and you can't make tackles if you're on the ground. Watch the effective blocking by Minnesota here. They get their linemen out. They get right on top of them, right there. Take a look at that lineman there. Now watch what happens to the Michigan defense. Guys start going down. Two guys on the ground. Watch right here. Watch number 43 come across Diggs. He's going to get picked up right at the end by Tepe. That's an inside linebacker coming inside out. There's a fullback ready to meet him. You got a safety trying to make a tackle on the goal line. Jackson can't get it done. Minnesota's touchdown. Scored by the freshman Maroney. All 10 plays on that drive were running plays. Carl Tabb from the goal line, running back the kickoff by Reese Lloyd. And he got banged down shy of the 20 yard line. Tackled by Jeremy Fowey. Michigan still, Rod, cannot get out of the game plan. Don't have Navarre start chucking the ball around. We already showed you the bad effect of this. That could be when he's thrown 40, 50 times. Stay with the game plan. Yeah, against Oregon, this was about the time that they panicked. And then they got further behind. Perry bounces outside with some running room and cut it back inside and got to the 28-yard line. One yard short of the first down, Kyle McKenzie made the tackle on Chris Perry, the senior, who's been averaging 129 yards rushing per game. And we'll see if Michigan stays patient with the run. Well, I think they have to, and I think they have to keep giving to Perry. To me, watching him on tape, Mike, he's not making or breaking as many tackles the last couple weeks as he did earlier in the season. 
LeVar with a lot of time going deep, and it is incomplete. Jason Avant was open inside the 30. Tremaine Banks had the coverage, but they could not make the completion. Well, Tremaine Banks, Mike, he does something here that is really dangerous. You're not kidding. If you go inside, you better know you can get the ball. Watch him go inside. He goes inside, and the ball's over his head. He got lucky there. Yeah, he was in trouble. As soon as he turned his back and got spun around, anytime a DB has to spin and turn his back to the quarterback, he's in a bit of trouble. Went for the deep ball on second and one. Now they have to convert on third down and one. And Perry gets stacked up. Did not appear to get to that yellow line. Although where the officials running in, they might mark it on the line. Kyle McKenzie made the stop. Looks like they gave him a very nice spot there across the 29-yard line. Yep, yeah, he got it because of that. He said McKenzie and Dan Kopinski. D-line did a nice job of beating him right in the hole, but got the first down. Yellow line says so. Never lies. Never Yellow lies. Line. High in the sky, don't lie. Yep, there it is. Crowd booing. They didn't like the spot either. Okay, now, you're Michigan. You try to pick up this first down. Let's see if they actually get it here or if it's just a matter of the spot. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. That's pretty generous. Wow. Oh, boy. When the ref Never got close to yeah. one. When the refs get graded on that one, I think there'll be a minus there. From the 29, first and 10. Eight minutes left in the half. Navarre throws it out for Brian Thompson, the backup fullback. And he was tripped up quickly by Jermaine Banks. Ball spotted at the 32. It'll be second down and seven. Michigan with its national title hopes gone. Focusing now on the Big Ten race. And they already have one loss in conference. Well, Minnesota trying to remain undefeated. They're talking not only here in Minneapolis about Big Ten, but uh -huh. they're talking about BCS Bowl game, Rose Bowl, and who knows. They win the night. They control their own destiny in the Big Ten. Chris Perry out to the 35-yard line. Sean McDonough with Mike Golick, Rod Gilmore, and Alex Flanagan. Delighted to have you with us for this college football Friday. Boy, Carr wasn't all that excited about playing on Friday night. They no. moved this game to Friday a couple of weeks ago in anticipation of the possibility that the Minnesota Twins would have a home playoff game here tomorrow. Well, they took the hook early in the series to uh, the Yanks to move on, but this game has already moved to Friday. Lloyd's problem is with the disruption of the academic schedule for his football team. Here's Perry with a flag down, and they blow the play dead. Lloyd Carr can't be too happy with, with the call on the with what's going on. His team last week brought against Iowa. They came out smoking, jump out to a 14 nothing lead, and then gone. Well, I think it's always a problem when you have goals to win the national title, yep. and then you lose that goal early in the season. It's tough to get your guys to refocus. You and reassess, what are yeah. we playing for now? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's a difficult thing. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan. Hey, Sean, along those lines, you think after losing two of their last three games, you might think the motivation would be a problem for Michigan. The team captain, John Navarre, says not so. He said the team captains held a number of team meetings this week, but the team is focused and motivated because they still believe they have a shot at the Big Ten title, and they are clinging on to that hope. Screen. Well set up. Perry. Stopped short of the first down, we think. Unless we have another mysterious spot. Eli <laughs> Ward made the tackle with help from Daryl Reed. You know, I, I don't know that I buy what John DeBar told folks and what Alex just reported. I mean, he, he may say that, but anytime you have to refocus on the fly like that, I think that's a hard thing to do when you lose your goal. They thought this was the best team they yep. had at Michigan since 97. And, and there's no way around that. I mean, that, that if you're at Michigan, that has to be your goal. And the way it started out this year, you know, after that win over Notre Dame, 3-0, and people were stay, starting to whisper, maybe this is the best team in the country, that absolutely needs to be your goal. And, and it's gone now. You see, they're going to be a little short. Glenn Mason was giving the officials an earful, and he still is. That's a bad spot. You can read his lips. That's the second bad spot. A helmet came off and rolled toward right where about where they marked the football. 
long as there wasn't a head in it, it's okay. No. Uh, you know, I think Lloyd Carr's going to go for this, and I, I just, I don't like this. You'll, you'll see the spot here, but going for this on fourth down, to me, that says you're desperate. you got a whole lot of time left in this ball game, Mike. A whole lot of time. I can't stand the fact that I agree with you on that. Thank I you. really do. You, you, you can't get out of your game plan right now. I think these teams that need a something to shake it, get them going. I like the call. Well, if they miss it, they might as well go home. Well, the spots they've been getting, they might as well go That's for That's right. They're going to have the first down right now. Navarre losing that 6-6 oh, yeah. six, six frame. Appears to have the first down and does. They'll mark it near the 40. First down, Michigan with 5.53 left in the first half. I still don't like it. I, I think it's a desperate move. I think it sends a message to your team. We have to score on this drive. And if you don't score on this drive, what does that do to your team? I think it deflates your team. Uh, I agree with you. It certainly worked out for them here, but I, I am a little surprised this early they would do that. But that's why we're here. Boyd Carr's down there. Doesn't it say I have confidence in you to pick up the six inches we need for a first down? That would be the other thing that, that you would say, yeah. There's two sides to everything, Sean. You're right. <laughs> LeVar looking deep again, looking for Braylon Edwards, and it is incomplete. Coverage from Yuki Dozier, who almost got hit in the back by that ball. <laughs> Yuki Dozier did nothing but plant himself in front of the receiver. He didn't look back. Rod, he just sit there and said, okay, you're, I'm just going to watch your hands go for it. I'm going to stay right where you are. Yeah, stay he, right where you are. Well, and there's no pass interference because there was just as much contact caused by Edwards right. as it was by Yuki. Dozier's been an improving player. Coach Hudson said he used to be just a guy. Now he's a guy you can really count on. Perry skipped ahead for a couple to the 43. Yeah. Bring him another third down and seven. You never want to be just a guy. You, you never want to hear a coach say, well, what kind of a player is he? He's, he's just a guy. Just a guy. Just a guy. I just want to be a little more than a guy. Yeah. Just a guy. You, you won't play very much. Well, Coach Hudson, when he went on his recruiting trip to Notre Dame, thought he would fit right in. Then he saw Mike Golick. Yeah. Then a player. He said, I realized maybe I'm not big enough to play in Notre Dame. Look at the size of Golick, but Coach Hudson did play. He went there anyway. At Notre Dame. I didn't scare him enough. Not much of a rush. Flag thrown in the offensive backfield by the referee. The pass caught by Steve Breston, a redshirt freshman. But it's a holding call against wow. Michigan. They would have had a first down to the 44-yard line on a gain of 13, but it comes back. That was an excellent pass by Navarre. Minnesota gave a little cushion there. A little? <laughs> holding <laughs> offense. 10 yards, previous spot, third down. Well, this ain't nothing for Navarre now. All his, all his passes have been long anyway. Here's another one as well. Let's take a look. Well, keep your eye right there. It's Chris Perry who gets in there long with Adam Stenovich. Stenovich, 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 yeah. Stenovich is in there, yeah. He's the one who was holding, and Chris Perry helped him out a little bit. Uh, I don't know about that one either. It's not like you really grabbed him. Yeah, I just Perry? kind of pushed him from behind. I don't know. See my uh, clinic. I'm holding. You can't get around, <laughs> around the back. So now third down and 17. Again, just a three-man rush. Deep ball, and it is incomplete. Right through the hands of Tremaine Banks. He had the coverage on Carl Tab, and Tab looked like he might have given up on that route. Yeah, he did. He got. He went out of bounds, and he did. He didn't go near it at all. That protection this time steps up. He's a deep actually It's a smarter move not to not to intercept the ball. They'll get better field position now. And yeah, Tremaine Banks in great position. And you know when you know the team can only throw deep routes, you can cover them. That's exactly you don't get right. fooled. And they're laying back waiting for the deep ball. Finley's punt taken at the 24 by Marion Barber. Down at the 31 yard line. A 45 yard punt by Finley. So all's well with the punt game tonight for Michigan, but that's been one of the few highlights for the Wolverines. Renewed enthusiasm for this Minnesota football program here in the Twin Cities. A sellout crowd on hand because Minnesota is 6 0 for the first time since 1960. 
something good happened to them that year, didn't it? Went to the Rose Bowl, won the AP National Championship. They went to the Rose Bowl again after the 61 season, the 62 Rose Bowl. That was the last time they played in the Rose Bowl. They haven't had a share of the Big Ten title since 1967. We're thinking about all those things this year after this terrific start and a good start of the game tonight as well. Lawrence Maroney out to the 36-yard line. Marlon Jackson made another tackle. Guys, it's always dangerous to question effort. But if you're Lloyd Carr, you saw a wide receiver give up on a route a moment ago. And I know you talk about the great tackling, I mean the great blocking on the yep. touchdown run by Maroney and how hard it is for the tacklers to get off those blocks. But you wonder if they were giving maximum effort to get off. We've seen a lot of Minnesota runners get a long way downfield yep. before there's anybody in a white shirt near them. Already 157 yards rushing. They're averaging about seven yards per carry. And there's another first down on Ellerson. Carry to the 42-yard line. Here's Reese Davis. All right, Sean, when we join you on the Olive Garden halftime report, you know, we've got another Big Ten game in primetime tomorrow night, Ohio State, Wisconsin. Barry Alvarez will join us. Also have the Friday night tailgate to look ahead to the weekend and Florida's other big game. What about the Badgers and the Buckeyes? Well, I'll ask Barry Alvarez at halftime, will he continue to run the football against the number one rush defense in the nation? And that Ohio State-Wisconsin game is so important, guys, because Ohio State does not play Minnesota. And the way Minnesota's playing, Ohio State's got to keep up, man. Have we seen that happen in the Big Ten before? Yeah, last year. Yeah. Abdul Khalik. All kinds of running room now. And he got nine to the 49-yard line of Michigan. Ernest Shazer finally made the tackle. If you're coming up on the blind side of a quarterback that can run, you have to attack his outside hip. Here comes Pierre Woods running straight at him, and he gets sidestepped. The first thing when I got in the NFL, they told me when you're playing against John Elway, if you're coming up onto his backside a little bit, go to the, the outside of his hip. <laughs> because he's going to roll on you and get outside. Pierre Woods yep. needed to be wider on that one. John had more spins than the top. Boy, he did. <laughs> Lawrence Maroney on second and short has the first down to the Michigan 42-yard line. Yeah, Maroney's in there now, but you know, Marion Barber is looking more like a Heisman candidate than Chris, you know, Perry. Chris Perry was. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Trev told us earlier in the year Trev Albert started this. Chris Perry was a Heisman Trophy candidate, and I said, you don't make them in September. Right? You well, you don't. Me? Okay. Well, well, right. I, early in the season, I mentioned the name Stephen Jackson, my friend, yep. and he's still way up there as well. Marion right. Barber certainly making it a big, bigger name for himself. Are you two done patting yourselves on the back and resume action yeah. here, or Go should ahead. we stick with the self-lovathon? <laughs> Lawrence Maroney, <laughs> the ball carrier to the 38-yard line. You, you mentioned Trev Albert's comments. I'll be interested to hear what he has to say about Minnesota at halftime because he was less than confident, shall we say, about Minnesota's chances after the 6-0 start. He wanted to see more, which a lot of people did. Exactly. But that got used here locally. The media yep. brought it to the attention of the players. Hey, Trev Albert's on the ESPN. Question how good you guys really are. Trev get in trouble with somebody. Every year he just gets somebody mad That's at That's his him. job. Yeah, does he it does well, it well, I guess. Yeah. Second and six. Thomas Tape with a flag down. He went down for a loss. Back at the 40. The clock now a factor. 114 left. They do have all three timeouts left. Each team holding against the Golden Gophers. Sean, I want to go back to a point you made earlier about effort. And, and I think that is something that's going to be addressed at halftime by Michigan, their coaches. I, I expect that Lloyd Carr will talk to his guys about their redefined goals and about the effort on running plays because Minnesota's run up and down the field on them. And in the second half, I think we might see something different, a little more pride out of Michigan. Sean, it is a great point. I think effort and the frustration of big, strong guys on defense trying to play through blocks but getting cut off, and then the frustration saying, oh, I'm cut off again. Now I can't get to the play. They have to show patience on that defense. They want to attack. They have got to use their hands better and stay on their feet. Ball back at the 48-yard line, second and 16. Abdul Khalid spinning again. And fellas, 14, 17, 21 down to Minnesota. That's like being even more behind against uh, other teams because 
Minnesota hangs on to the ball for so long. Exactly. Dave Carson, one of the things we need to do is stay on the field on offense because if we don't, Minnesota stays on the field all day. Well, I, I go back to that fourth down play because I still believe that sent the wrong message to the Michigan players that they were in a desperate mode. Why are they letting the clock run down as much as they are? Abdul Khalid going deep for Hosack. Incomplete. I guess that's why maybe Coach Mason just didn't feel confident in their ability to get a first down, but they're in plus field position here and just content to let the clock run out. I, I think he's content with the first half, and plus he had a third and very long and didn't want to have a bad play happen. He'll go in 14 nothing at halftime and be happy about it. And you know why he'll be happy about it? Because let's look to the third quarter, guys. Minnesota has outscored their opponents in the third quarter 42 to nothing. They have not given up a point in the third quarter. I'd say they take that score going into halftime. See what Michigan can come out with in the third quarter. Second punt for Reese Lloyd. Doubles as the place kicker and putter. First Golden Gopher to do that since the great Gino Capaletti. Back in the early 50s. Aiming for the corner. He missed it by a long shot. They'll mark it out at the 33-yard line. Eight seconds left in the half. Minnesota leading 14 to nothing. Michigan takes over after a 12-yard punt. And as the Wolverines begin, first and ten, take a look at the new color of money, the redesigned $20 bill. What is different about this, fellas? Can you tell you guys $20 bill historians? The color's a bit different, is it not? Is that Peter Gannon's no. $20 <laughs> bill? I tell you a bad, a tough story about the $20 bill. This morning I was doing my radio show at the local affiliate here at KFAN, and all they had for Shameless food. plug number one, by the way. Well, that was good. First of several to come, undoubtedly. All they had for food was vending machine, and all I had was 20s. That doesn't work well. No? I had to break it. Would the new 20 work? I broke the vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> it was easier. I thought you meant you broke the 20. Oh, no. The bar oh. crunch on the last play of the half by Paul Nixon and Daryl Reed. It looked like a mouth piece. guard went no. flying think, right I, out of there. I think that was an ear, that's an ear, that's an ear piece. That's oh. somebody's ear piece. Oh, man. They're gonna see it go flying. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Other There's than that, Mr. Navarre, how'd you enjoy the half? Gonna be some words in the, ha the halftime. Here's Alex. Guys, I'm down here with Coach Mark, Coach Corliss in the first half, how does the game plan change in the second half? I can't half? hear you. Corliss in the first half, how does the game plan change in the second half? Well, we've got to stop making penalties, and we've got to run the football better, and uh, the biggest thing, we've got to protect better. How do you rate your players' effort and emotion level right now? Well, uh, it doesn't matter what happened in the first half. We've got to do a better job in the second half. What do you tell them at the half to get them fired? I tell them they got 30 minutes to win the Little Brown Jug. All right, Coach, thank you. We've had possession of that Little Brown Jug, which goes to the winner each year of the game in this rivalry since 1987. Glenn Mason says he's never seen the Little Brown Jug. He's halfway there tonight. 14. Halftime here in Minneapolis. Minnesota leads 14 to nothing. Michigan shut out in the first half for the first time since their game in 2001 against Ohio State. Yeah, how about that? And, you know, Minnesota threw one pass in the second quarter. I think second half, Michigan, they got to find a way to get serious about stopping the running game. And it's just flat-out effort, I think, in that regard. I agree, and we're going to get into that, but Minnesota, you got it. They're answering questions tonight that they belong on the national scene. It's a great job out of them. You'll see the same thing. 186 yards rushing in the first half. Expect a heck of a lot more in the second half or attempts at it anyway let's see if Michigan can stop them at all Troy Neenberg kicks off into the end zone over the heads of Marion Barber Dan Lawrence Maroney let's well, check out the ESPN game track yeah are we going to see more of this in the second half Barber with a touchdown run a beautiful run in the first quarter and in the freshman Maroney he also got a little taste of the end zone Mike and I'll tell you what, that Minnesota defense, they've held Michigan in 97 yards and one less ear pad. Watch the white ear pad come flying out of the bar. Oh, man, what a way to end the half, get crunched. Let's see how Michigan responds. Again, Minnesota has not given up a point in the third quarter all year. From the 20, first and 10. Marion Barber 
First down. He managed to walk the tightrope for quite a while. Looked like he might go out near the 30. They give him across the 40 for a 21 yard gain. Leon Hall finally got him across the boundary. Well, how good is he? He is so good that Vikings head coach Mike Tice said, I take that guy. Yeah. He can play for the Vikings. They said, How do you like the backfield? He said, I take 20, I take number 21. And that's a pr pretty nice price for a guy that's still, still got a little bit of time left in college. His fourth 100 yard rushing game of the season now. The season I was 134 in their win at Penn State. Change of direction by Barber. And nearly 10 more and a late flag thrown. They give him 11. Out of bounds at the 48 yard line, chased out by Ernest Shazer. Well, that's oh, a this against block Minnesota. in the back. Yeah. And that was right at the end of the play when it was really at a time where it couldn't help Barber anyway. But, uh, th this is what needs to happen for Michigan. And we know at halftime they got chewed out. We know they're going to come out and try and hit somebody. But. Illegal block in the back, above the waist, on the offense. 10 yards, first down. For them to win, it's not about. Can we punch them in the nose hardest? It's about control and patience on defense. They don't need to run over the offensive linemen. They need to ride with them. The old lineman is cutting them off and chopping them. They need to be patient. They need to play with their hands, and they need to flow. They can't just say, biggest guy in the block is going to win this. They can go ahead and win the, punch, win the punch fight here, but they're not going to win the war overall because they're not flowing and not using their hands. First and eight. Barber to the short side of the field. Got a couple out to the 44. Here's Alex Flanagan. Sean, I spoke to Glenn Mason at the half, and he said that he reminded his team that they are playing a very talented football team. He says he wants them to be excited at the prospect of what would be a huge win, but he does not want them to lose focus. He told them you can't get caught up in that thought because he told his team there is no quitting in Michigan. He says if there was one thing he could change about the first half, it would be penalties, but not much else, Sean. Yeah, and he's kind of picky because they had only two. Yeah. The penalty a moment ago for the illegal block, the third of the night against Minnesota. Barber tackled at the 49 yard line. And another flag down. Lamar Woodley made the tackle. Another holding call. Dan Mason downplaying the importance of this game, guys. But this is the seventh year. He's done a very nice job here. 26 wins right. in the four-year period. Offense doing the run. 10-yard penalty, second down. Preceding this season, that's the best four-year stretch here since the early 40s, back when Minnesota was a football power. But isn't this really the kind of game that can elevate your program to a whole other level? I, I think it can. And he said, you know, there are stages for a team. And I think he's right. You know, you're a loser, then you become a winner. Then you become a bowl team, then a consistent bowl team. Then you jump up over that to a big ball. Quick pass to Ellerson. He almost took off down the sideline. He went for 96 and a touchdown last week against Northwestern, the longest pass play in Minnesota history. And Pierre Wood stopped him from doing that again, a nine-yard game. His team is ready to jump up into that next echelon of bowls, and partly because of guys like Ellison. You heard about the 96-yarder last week. He's become a consistent player for this team. Now they have the parts on offense to where they can be a big bowl team. And if they have the trickle-down effect, guys, too, it being a big bowl team and on a national, the national scene, recruiting. All of a sudden, Michigan looks like a nice choice for some blue-chip athletes. Or Minnesota does, I'm sorry. That pass deflected and incomplete. Intended for Ben Utech. And that'll bring him fourth down. They get the national spotlight tonight against one of the premier football programs at all of college football. As a matter of fact, Glenn Mason said, we're like the Minnesota Twins. Michigan's like the New York Yankees. That's right. Yep. Well, and locally, the Vikings don't play this week. They're undefeated, so they've been getting most of the attention here. But they're off. The Twins are done. Great chance to captivate the local market, too. Reese Lloyd to punt. He's been a big lift to their program. They didn't find out until the day before the season opener that he was eligible out of junior college. They had all kinds of hunting and kicking concerns, but then Lloyd became eligible the day before the season began. Problem solved. That punt spotted out of bounds at the 17-yard line of 35-yard kick. Again, shut out in the first half. They'll take over for the first time on offense. Here in the second half, just 97 yards of offense in the first half. And look at what the, the triple threat has done through the, this. Is their 
uh, their averages for games. And this is tonight. Edwards is eight receiving yards. Perry not doing anything on the ground. And Navarre's chucking him deep. Incomplete. From the 17, first and 10. Quick throw to Jason Avant. And he's tackled at the 24 by Justin Isom. Justin's a senior from Hubert Heights, Ohio. Well, the guy missing from the Michigan office, offense right now is Edwards. Braylon Edwards, not much happening for him. He's a, he's a difference maker. He's a guy that you got to get the ball to. He, he's off the field right now. He's not out there. But some point during this drive or third quarter, they got to get him involved more. Edwards has two catches tonight for just eight yards. A reverse. Steve Preston tackled after a very short game by Justin Isom again. Isom already graduated from the University of Minnesota. He transferred in from Minnesota from Butler, and he had lost the starting position after Fraley came on yep. the last two weeks. And does a nice job here. Staying to the outside and turning it back in. A lot of speed on this Minnesota defense. This Michigan offense, guys, is out of sync. What they need to do to get into what I think they need to start doing a little more on offense. On third and two, Preston, the motion man. The bar will throw. He's going to run for it as the first down. Out of bounds across the 30 at the 31-yard line. All right, I'm going to game plan here, Rod. All right? Michigan, what's happening on the runs is they have Boss pulling, but Ben West, the linebacker, is just flying up, and basically it's called trapping the trapper. He's selling his body. Eli Ward's playing up. They're stopping the run. What Michigan needs to do is forget the long passes for now, dump them over the middle, not the out route so much, but middle routes, eight yards, five yards, eight yards, 10 yards, 12 yards in the middle. Keep the linebackers back, keep the safeties back a little bit, get them on their heels a bit, spread them out, and then you can run it. Tomorrow. All right, coach, we'll see. Three minutes played, third quarter. They're trying to set up a screen. Perry avoided Tremaine Banks and is finally pushed out of bounds in Minnesota territory at the 47-yard line by Ben West. Great play by Perry. It looked like Banks would blow up that play, but Chris went leaping over Banks and went ahead for 21 yards. Yeah, great individual effort here. So you caught it. Banks was in great position carry a superior effort to get over him and Mike I like what you're talking about with the offense but that's not what they have at Michigan what they're going to do is when they want to go short they go to the screen game to the wide receivers in the backs and they go deep they don't have that intermediate passing game you're talking about uh, it's, 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 it may cost them first and ten Michigan here's Perry heading it back toward the inside and a good tackle by Terrence Campbell at the 43, five yards on first down for Michigan. And that's a tackle, I think, in the first couple weeks of the season, Perry breaks. Now, I don't know if it's because maybe he's a little banged up, maybe it's because he's had a lot of work, but that's a tackle. You see him breaking, and he gets another 20, 30 yards and goes all the way. Perry has a lot on his mind. His mom recently diagnosed with cancer. He's undergoing treatment. David Underwood comes in at running back. A quick pass to Braylon Edwards. He's pushed out of bounds with a first down at the 36-yard line. Pushed out by Yuki Dozier. So that is 20 straight games now with at least three receptions for Braylon Edwards on his third of the night. Well, and there you see what we were talking about. Their, their short passing game. Yep. Screen to Perry. Screen to Edwards. All outside. Yep. had seven catches for 114 yards and two scores last week at Iowa. Had another big game in their other loss at Oregon. He had 144. Double pass. Preston was a high Got school it. quarterback. He has Navarre with lots of room. Navarre inside the 15. Touchdown, Michigan. Can you say trickeration? Trickeration. And how about some life on the Michigan sideline? They set him up with his two screen passes. 
and then a great throw by Bresson. And look at the wall. It's like a punt return, except with slow alignment. <laughs> well, they took advantage of Minnesota being so aggressive on those screenplays. Garrett Rivas, the freshman, adds the extra point. So Michigan lethargic most of the night on the board now and down by only a touchdown is Preston, who was a quarterback at Woodland Hills High School near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, found the bar, who did the rest. It's 14 to 7, Minnesota. John Navarre on the receiving end for the 36-yard touchdown play. Steve Breston with his first career pass attempt. Now look at they get them all the defenders looking this way and coming this way. Set him up and sees him open. Just got to loft it up there. Look at the wall he's got going. Easy run to the outside. Nice lead blockers, all 300-pounders chugging away down the field. <laughs> I love watching a big guy run downfield. Look at that. that. That's a punt return wall. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> Except they're all 300 pounds. And look at them all basically staying on their feet. How about Navarre running through a tackle? I thought he couldn't run. That's what people say. He said he couldn't run. As you might expect, it's his first career reception. Troy Neenberg kicks off again. Safe was the sliding Maroney at second base. Now, fellas, 14 to 7. Minnesota's had it going their way most of the night. If you're a Minnesota fan, shouldn't you be a little uneasy? Gee, it's been going our way all night, and yet we're only ahead by a touchdown. Well, I think, I think that's right, because on that first drive, they were moving the ball, but they had two penalties that pulled them back, and then they give up a big play. So I think if you are a Minnesota fan, you start thinking, wait a minute, was it just a first-half deal? And I go back to what we talked about at the end of the first half when Minnesota had the ball in Michigan territory at all their timeouts. Yep. was in no hurry to score again ahead 14 and nothing. You had a Michigan team that looked like it was going through on the, the motions. Bit, yeah. On the ropes, you've lost 14 in a row to these guys. Bury them while you have a chance. They seem quite content to go off ahead 14 to nothing. Marion Barber stopped for a loss of one. Lamar Woodley. Back up left defensive end up to make the play. This, this could be a, a momentum changing drive for Michigan. They get out there and get a three and out or stop them, get possession again. All of a sudden, there may be, may be a little bit of uh oh going on. Well, I think they got to find a way also, Michigan, to get Marlon Jackson involved a little bit. I mean, I think he fires up the defense when he makes plays. Shot of Dual Kalik. Can't find a receiver. Finally finds Barber in the flat. Makes a man miss, first down. Out to the 36-yard line, a gain of 17. Lawrence Reed made the tackle. Rod, Rod you're talking about Chris Perry. You, you did that early and has trouble to scoop the first tackle. Perry and Barber, no trouble. Yeah, this is what you're supposed to do if you're a good back. You make the first guy miss. That is your guy. You take care of him. And anything else you get, gravy. And Barber did his job. Ten minutes left, third quarter. Barber again. Here another first down across the 45-yard line. Credit Marlon Jackson with another tackle. How about Greg Esslinger, the center? I mean, he, he's doing a tremendous job tonight. They get a double team right at the point of attack, and then they seal off the linebacker inside. There's a huge hole. Esslinger is a guy who had to send around tapes when he was in high school because nobody, no Division I team wanted him. He's sending tapes to Jules to try and get a look. And the end, 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 end up starting as a freshman last year. Incredible, incredible work ethic. I, I love what they say about him. He doesn't play to the whistle. He plays through the whistle. Well, and they had a pretty good sitting here before. You know, ben Hamilton. And they thought Ben Hamilton was just great. And this guy has been playing lights out very much like Hamilton. Make your own tape. I'll tell you what. They pull the center a lot, which you don't see very you often. You don't see a lot. Well, he, again, he's about 280, and you're starting to see that in the NFL more, and the scouts look for that. A center that can get out of the move. Another lineman you can get out in front. Usually you have the guards, but when you get the center out there as well, that's big time, and that's something he can do. Now, again, we'll see if he gains some weight, but again, they like their linemen a little smaller. He, he's got good feet. He's a guy that played yep. hockey. You know all about that stuff. You know, he was a hockey guy. What, a defenseman or something? Well, I bet he was a bit intimidating on stage. <laughs> and Utech, the tight end who's 255 pounds, was a goalie in high school in Hastings, Minnesota. A very good one. Thought about pursuing hockey 
at the collegiate level on second and short. There's Barber again, powering for a couple of extra yards to the 42-yard line of Michigan. Lawrence Reed made the tackle. That's 13 more for Marion Barber the third, working on a career night. Mike, watch the patience. Absolutely. Watch the patience. He waited for the blocks to develop, and then he accelerated through the hole. But watch this guy here. Watch the lineman get out there. Watch here again, going. Going up, get the shoulder going low, doing just enough. Again, just seal blocks. That's all it is. Seal blocks that time by Essling, Esslinger and Quinn. But a great, you, you hit the nail on the head, Rod. Patience was the key there with Barber. 13 carries for Barber, 156 yards. Here's Maroney with a flag down. And he's down for a loss back to the 44. Roy Manning, a backup linebacker, made the tackle. Another holding call. Number 19, Michigan. And number 13, Minnesota. Minnesota the favorite tonight, despite losing the last 14 head-to-head -head against the Wolverines. Minnesota trying to remain undefeated. They're 6-0. And leading Michigan 14-7 to to the third quarter. Sean McDonough with Rod Gilmore, Mike Golick, and Alex Flanagan. One of the stars of the night for Minnesota. Marion Barber the third he's now 17 yards shy of his career best in rushing yards in the game for the 156 tonight these penalties are really starting to hurt Minnesota this one takes them back to their own 47 Barber stopped for a gain of one by Lamar Woodley we call this pretty much the old barber shot. You got it going in the first quarter, chop them up for a touchdown, and then a big long run in the second quarter. Didn't stop there. You saw that last one a few moments ago, Mike. The patience, the acceleration. He's been everything for, for those guys tonight. Got an excellent burst. The patience, as you said, and then boom, he hits that hole and he's through. This 45-yard run in the first half was the longest play given up by Michigan this year. Big pop delivered by Marlon Jackson on Marion Barber. There's Marion's mom. An 11-yard gain on that play. I mentioned the dad, Marion Barber, played in the NFL with the Jets. Was a great player here in Minnesota. Not here. This is another son's high school game tonight. Marion Barber, the dad, still number four all-time in rushing here in Minnesota. More than 3,000 career rushing yards. Didn't he beat Michigan? His team beat Michigan back in, uh, was it 77? 1977. 16 to nothing. There's the shutout win for the Gophers. There's Maroney with the first down and the touchdown! Barber's going to get another phone call with an update from Mrs. Barber. She can tell him about a 38-yard touchdown run. Second score of the night for the freshman from St. Louis, Lawrence Maroney. Wow. Now Reese Lloyd to add the extra point. That's 119 in a row, PATs for Minnesota. Another 80-yard drive, seven plays. And Maroney with his second touchdown of the night. Eight minutes left of the third quarter in Minneapolis, and the Golden Gophers lead by two. An answer by Minnesota just after Michigan scored to get within a touchdown. The Golden Gophers go 80 yards to score. Now take a look at the offensive linemen as they seal everybody inside. Now also watch the bad pursuit angles by Michigan. They get sealed inside. Look at Shazer, 25. He comes at a bad angle. That gives Maroney the corner, and they are just going. I mean, they're just killing these guys right there. I know it's slow motion, but I still wonder if some of those Michigan guys are running as fast as we were accustomed to seeing them it's, run. It, it's an embarrassment right now the way they're getting run out. Lloyd booms one in the end zone. Minnesota has rushed for 284 yards tonight with eight minutes left in the third quarter. This isn't Troy State or Louisiana Lafayette they're playing tonight. And that Louisiana Lafayette is a the team they've rushed for the most against this year. 356 yards. Could you imagine 
if you cross Louisiana Lafayette out, put Michigan in as a team you run, ran the ball the most on. But when you beat wow. Penn State and you run the ball like this on Michigan, you're a pretty good football team. I don't think it matters what your schedule was, but when you handle that team yep. at Penn State and you run like this, you're a pretty good football team. Absolutely. Minnesota has rushed for at least 240 yards in every game this year. All seven of them now. Navarre on target. Jason Avant battling for every inch out to the 40-yard line. A gain of 20 and a first down. Yuki Dozier made the tackle. You mentioned the rush yard total. At least 240 in every game. Look at that. 250 on Penn State. And I tell you what, we've been talking about the backs, but we're giving some love to the line, which we should. This is this is a, a blow for smaller linemen everywhere, 280 and 290. They're considered small now, but that's exactly what this offense wants. Lavar throws quickly. Avant again. Dropped after a game of two. Good reaction by Tremaine Banks. Do you feel the panic in the Michigan offense? That sense that we must hurry and score. We no. must throw the ball. Do you? I do. I mean, they come out, they throw the ball. They come out, they throw a screen. I mean, where's Chris Perry? I, I, I agree. I still think they should be using Chris Perry. I, I, I'm just I'm not impressed right now with the play call. That's for sure. Out of the flat, there's Chris Perry on a pass play, breaking tackles. And finally taken down from behind in Minnesota territory at the 46 by Daryl Reed. That is a 13-yard gain in a Wolverines first down. Deshaun, we talked about it earlier in the game. When Michigan throws the ball more than 40 times, that's not usually a good result. Now, they get a good result on this play because Perry makes a guy miss. And that's like a sweep. Yeah, <laughs> but when they throw it a lot, it doesn't work out for them. You, you mentioned it, and I agree. Get Chris Perry the ball any way you can. Get him in space. This is Perry. We talked about his biggest improvement in his opinion this year is that he's more patient as a runner. He was patient there, waiting for something to develop, but nothing did for him. Kyle McKenzie took him down to the line of scrimmage. At least go away from your tendencies. You know, first down run by Michigan, first down run by Michigan. I mean, how about, yeah. okay, throw it on first down. I'm all right with that. Let's get some second down runs in there. You know, get yourself I, in a position where you give him a little better chance. I agree. You have to find a way to keep this Minnesota defense were being as aggressive as they are. As you look at the numbers for both backs, Greg Hudson, the D coordinator, has got these guys frothing at the mouth right now. Michigan's giving them no reason to not do it. On second and ten, the bar trying to set up another screen to Perry. And Tremaine Banks played it well. A short game to the 42-yard line. And that'll bring up third down and six. You cannot play a screen pass much better than Banks played it there. Came up. How many times have they seen it? I mean, it's getting easy to diagnose it anymore. I mean, they're running the same way. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. You see it five or six times, you got to figure it out. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> got some talented wide receivers here that, you know, if you're going to have to throw the ball, you keep using a little bit. How about the noise? Down and six. There's David Underwood. Perry's understudy stopped short of a first down by about a yard. And if you went for it in your own territory in the first half, wouldn't you go for this? Yeah, I, I like that call. I like that third down call thinking we're in a territory where we'll go for it. We've got two plays. They pick up yardage. I, I like the call there. Uh, I like it. And, and, and Sean, I agree with you. Yes, they, they have to go for it. Yeah, I think they decided yep. a play ago that they would go for it on fourth down if they made yards. Yeah. Fourth down and one. Navarre four for four passing on the drive. And this is a long one, and now Michigan's going to use a timeout. With 4.27 left in the third quarter, Wolverines on the move, still down by 14. Michigan is looking at fourth down and a long yard at the Minnesota 37. They're one for one on fourth down tonight. They converted with inches to go in the first half. It's a pass and a bad pass. 
Navarre threw it too far ahead of Perry, who was open with the running room necessary to pick up the first down. And that's going to get the folks in Ann Arbor all over him. A clutch fourth down. Yep. You've got your man wide open, and Navarre just missed him. Look at all the green. Yep. So everybody's saying, well, why don't you just run the ball because you needed a yard? Well, you know what? Because he was wide open. John Navarre, 0-6 against ranked teams on the road. That was a long handoff. Yeah. Yeah, nothing wrong with that play call. That was oh, perfect. No. They were going to have the first down and much more. And players of this caliber should certainly be able to execute that play. But they did not. So Minnesota takes over at its own 38-yard line. Another ball control drive here. Abdul Khalik throws back for the tight end, Utek. And he's thrown for a loss. Looked like a promising play when it began, but Lawrence Reed eliminated the promise in a hurry. You talk about effort. Oh. Lawrence Reed delivered some effort on that play. That was a huge, if he wasn't there, the Utech was going. And that was a nice he, job by Reed. He's the only man alive on that side. Throw right, throw back. Reed is the only guy in position to do anything. And he does. That's the fact is everybody on the Gopher team looked at each other and said, we found ourselves the kicker and putter. And they still call him Winston. They even go in the rooms where they list the roster for the different special team groups. And when it's supposed to be Reese Lloyd, it just says Winston. Well, yeah, that, that's the way that deal works. I mean, once you get a nickname, it that sticks. nickname sticks. 60 yarders in practice, so that'll get you noticed. And the walk-off brings Michigan back inside the 14-yard line as they get ready to begin. It's time to take a look again at the new color of money, the redesigned $20 bill. Is that what a $20 bill looks like? Not that big. The new one. That's the new one. Hopefully they won't trip over. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, my wife and I must be carrying singles. So Thank you. <laughs> He has all the 20s. Navarre in the coverage and intercepted. Picked off by Justin Isom. And he brought it back to the 27-yard line. Mike, we've been talking about it the entire night. The desperation. And that is a telegraph pass. It is a route that Michigan runs time and time again. Isom saw it in the first half, and he was late getting over. This time, he read it right off the bat. He reads Navarre's eyes, and he jumps all over this route. It's the same thing they ran in the first half. When you throw deep, guys are going to stay back and just read you and say, you're going to throw deep. We're going to bait you. We know which way you're looking. We're going to bait. We're going to wait for the wait for the throw. We're going to break on it. It's a great job, but this read almost made it too easy. That's the first turnover of the game. And the interception by Isom, first of the senior season for Justin. Marion Barber getting a block from Tepe on the corner. And he's pulled down at the 23-yard line by Lawrence Reed. It's a gain of four for Minnesota. Sean, you mentioned it before when we were talking to the break. Every time they go left, they're getting the corner. Every time they go left, they're getting the corner. Again, with that Michigan defense, it's got to be about flow, using hands and moving along the line of scrimmage, not as much about penetration, especially when it's going wide. If you get penetration between the tight ends or between the tackles, you're, you're not going to be in the play. Well, they're just cutting Michigan to shreds. Yep. I mean, their guys are on the ground. Literally cutting Oh, yeah. yeah. Legally. Two tight ends in the game now. Here's Tape. Down near the 20-yard line. That'll bring up third down in the long four. I'll tell you one thing, anybody else who's going to play Minnesota this year, you better come prepared to get down, get low, because they will cut you down. They will definitely send their linemen and just cut you at the you, knee. You know what it's almost like? It's almost like playing like an Air Force, yeah. like an option team that, that goes at your legs all the time. You're going to have to have your scout team, obviously when you're breaking down the film, have the scout team throw at legs. And you hate to do that in practice because you risk injury when guys are diving for other guys' knees, but you have to work on it. Metrodome opened in 1982. Minnesota's hosted Michigan here nine times. The Gophers have never won. Man open, and it is incomplete, but flags thrown everywhere.
posthumous the intended receiver and he was tackled in what might have saved the touchdown. Yeah, that was Manning. That's yeah. that's a smart play. Actually, it is. You got beat, and then you make up for it by so bad to get beat, but then you make for up for it by doing a smart thing. Yeah, but you know that play comes about because Minnesota's been able to run and yeah. they run that option, you know, to the side, and you come back, he's wide open. Everybody's Tight slowing. One. Yeah. It, it's working because their offense is working. So they're running inside, outside option, pass to the wide side, pass to the middle. Everything's working. I've never seen a Michigan team, a defense, so dominated yep. by a team running the ball. I, I, I'm, I'm shocked by it. That was the first time tonight they've thrown toward Jared Posthumus. First and goal from the six. Nearing a minute and a half left to talk about Abdul Khalik changing the play frequently of the line of scrimmage. He might have done it there. There's Barber. Inside the five. It'll be second and goal from near the one yard line. Wow, the unsung here a lot of times is a fullback. And Thomas Tafay just came in like a missile. Hitting Marlon Jackson. I heard it all the way up here. So he and may be unsung, but the Ooh. NFL knows he's out there That's popping. Exactly folks. right. There are there are a lot of halfbacks that uh, that are great friends with their fullback. Lead, lead them all the way through. 295 yards on the run, and there's Tepay for another yard and another Minnesota touchdown. Stunning. Stunning. Stunning, but it's going to be on John DeVar's shoulders the rest of the way. He's gotten a lot of criticism about not having big games in big games. Yep. Fourth quarter is going to be all on him, and can he get it done for Michigan? I think you would agree, fellas. He's been unfairly maligned many times. Yes, over. he has. But tonight, he hasn't done it. But in fairness to John, can you find anybody in a white shirt tonight who has really stood out? Offensively or defensively? No. The touchdown by Tepay gives Minnesota its largest lead of the night, 28 to 7, with 58 seconds left in the third quarter. I... We talked about how Minnesota has never defeated Michigan in the Metrodome. And their last win in Minneapolis against Michigan was against the then number one ranked Wolverines at Old Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Minnesota about 10 minutes from here. Marion Barber with the touchdown run and then Kenneth Foxworth picked off Rick Leach and the celebration began. The late Cal Stoll was the coach then. Now it's Glenn Mason trying to get his first win against Michigan. And Mason wasn't certain what it would be like in the Metrodome. He says he's been here with the Vikings when they had things going and with the Twins, but he hasn't seen it quite like this for Minnesota football. And what he'd like to see, as the kickoff by Lloyd again was unreturnable, is a return to on-campus football with yeah. another stadium built over on the campus about 10 minutes from here. They've only won two of the last 33 against Michigan, but they've both been big wins. The other time they beat them in 1986, Michigan was ranked number two, and it was Ricky Foggy who led the Gophers. 25-point underdogs in that game to a win in Ann Arbor. Here's Alex Flanagan. Well, Sean, the Metrodome is rocking, and that was actually a concern that Michigan had about playing here at the Metrodome. They usually average about 30,000 people. They have 60,000 tonight, most of them Minnesota fans. Lloyd Carr says that he doesn't remember ever playing here when there have been that many fans. Michigan spent the week practicing with simulated crowd noise. Certainly, they are used to big crowds, just not against Minnesota. Not here. Braylon Edwards made the catch and got stopped short of the first down in Michigan now down by three touchdowns against his ball control go for offense will go without a huddle they need to score three times they need to do it quickly Avant no question about his effort tonight he's been fighting for every yard after each of his catches and Ben West made the tackle 
And, and Minnesota's going to hang back here, and they're going to give them those underneath routes and say, you can have those. We'll come up and make the tackles. But I, boy, I tell you, I saw Glenn Mason on the field before the game, and he he was just absolutely stoked. Like, he had just had, like, a 1,000 cups of coffee with, <laughs> with the energy that was going on in here. He said, if, if you love college football, this is what it's all about tonight. He's right. Bar with a lot of time. Has his receiver, Breston. Close to another first down. Out of the 49, it appears to be a first down. It is for Michigan. Kyle McKenzie made the tackle. And DeVar is warming up, and he has the ability. He's got a strong arm, and he gets into a streak where he's on target. He can get things going, so it's not over yet if he gets on a big hot streak. Four wide receivers for Michigan. And the throw is short to Calvin Bell. His first catch of the night, he's out of bounds at the 45. Next play will be the last of the third quarter. Never good in the third quarter when you're in your hurry-up offense. You know things aren't going your way. An amazing change in direction for the Michigan team since that win against Notre Dame. Absolutely. Number three in the nation and looked every bit like the third best team in the nation. And a loss at Oregon, an unimpressive win against Indiana, a loss at Iowa. And they're having it handed to them tonight, and that one was almost picked off again by Isom as he cut in front of Preston. That's the end of the third quarter. Minnesota looking to take back the little brown jug for the first time since 1986. Leads by three touchdowns. a 28 to 7 lead and the numbers tell the story of this Michigan season I tell you what that looks nice but that's the bottom line you know you're gonna start to see the underneath routes and such and you start to see him getting some more numbers in the box scores it may look good tomorrow with the numbers and such but wins and losses is all that matters and he did bring them back against Oregon and Iowa in the, in the fourth quarter but didn't finish the deal Michigan needs to convert this third down and five. Out of the flat, that pass on the money to Perry. Hit him in stride that time. And it's a first down at the 36-yard line. Well, I was going to say, as I was saying about the Oregon thing, he went on a streak in the fourth quarter. Against Iowa, he went on a streak. And he got the close. And then with two minutes to go in the ball game, he had a chance to finish the deal with a two-minute drive, and things fell apart for them. So he has the ability to do that and get them back in this ballgame. First and 10 from the Minnesota 36. And it's Calvin Bell, the senior from Simi Valley, California, with another catch. His second. Yuki Dozier had the coverage. And again, the, a lot of criticism will come on the quarterback and a lot of praise will come on the quarterback unjustly both ways sometimes. So Navarre certainly got criticized more than he should at times, but there are times when he certainly hasn't come up big. But when you're the quarterback, quarterback a big-time college team, that's what's going to happen. Uh, you know, I think that's part of it, but it's not the NFL. You know, you know, I don't think you give the guys the same kind of criticism you give the NFL quarterbacks. Just a three-man rush and a terrific juggling catch made by Braylon Edwards. On there and throw by Navarre, and it's good for a first down to the 25. Here is Alex. Hey, Sean, we talked about the criticism that John Navarre received. He says that the way that he handles it is he ignores it, which, of course, is easier said than done. He said it took him about a season to learn how to let, not let things get to him. Lloyd Carr's advice to him early on was don't listen to the radio, don't read the newspaper, can't talk to your neighbors, telling Navarre to put what you hear out of your mind and use it as motivation. But, Sean, Mike, and Rod, it's got to be uh, easier said than done, huh? Without question, he's also very close to his dad, Larry, who he leans on when times are tough. And you have to know that uh, friends and teammates, they hear things, sure. and, they, and they tell them, hey, yeah, there was an article about you. Yeah, I saw this in the chat room. You know, he hears it. He knows what's on, going on out there. And, and you hate to have all this pressure on college kids, but you know what? It's the way it is now. It, it, it's, it may be the way it is, but it's not right. Well, it's not the NFL. I, it, it doesn't make it right, but, but we know that this is big-time college ball. A lot on it. 
Barr stepped up and got it off to Chris Perry. First down. Out of bounds near the 10 yard line. Pushed out by Ben West. Barr did a nice job there to avoid the rush. He also played running room. He wanted to keep running. He, he did, but I think he did the smart thing by saying, you know what? I'm going to get the ball in the hands of my playmaker. So while he could have taken off, he said, I'm going to get it to Perry. He might be able to do a little more with it. I, I, I think that was a smart move. Guys, they get a score and they get a stop. They're right back there. Absolutely. 15 yard gain on the pass to Perry. Lamar with time again. Sets it up for Perry. Touchdown, Michigan. That is great usage of the screen. You got a defense playing back, giving some room. You go ahead and throw the screen, get your big guys out in front, and there you go. When Earlier in the game, when Minnesota was playing up and attacking more, the screen wasn't working as well. Worked it once or twice, but it was getting stuck more than a few times. Now you get the defense back, you have some effectiveness. They did not use a lot of the clock. Just a minute and 34 to go the 80 yards. 10 plays. Navar was 9 out of 10 on the drive. The touchdown by Perry brings life back to Lloyd Carr's sideline. Scored quickly. They're back within two touchdowns with nearly a full quarter remaining as we check the ESPN game track. Well, Marion Barber's having a big night. 16 carries, 163 yards is high. It's 173 yards, so he's nearing that. But Michigan got back with John Navarre catching a touchdown pass, but when they thought they were right back in the ball game in that third quarter, uh-uh. Maloney comes back with that beautiful run that responded to Michigan's score. Now we've just seen Michigan pull within two scores with Perry's touchdown. Would you say we've seen a little bit of a microcosm of John Navarre's career here tonight as Neenberg's kickoff goes out of the end zone? I, I absolutely agree. He does things that you say, wow, you love big kid, got a nice arm, a good touch at times, and at other times, he'll make a throw that you just say, wow, you got a fourth and one, you got a wide open guy, you miss him. You, 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 throw, you throw a ball that gets picked off, a little high, you, you get red, you're, you're baited into it. So he makes some throws to say, what went on? But he had a fantastic drive there, 9 and 10. But I agree with you, Sean. Yeah, it's kind of been his career. Minnesota responded last time, Sean. If they can respond now, it would probably take all of the life out of Michigan. Michigan needs to stop. Minnesota has rushed for 297 yards tonight. To pay, get six more. Tripped up by Ernest Shazer. Oh, just cut me open and let me bleed. I mean, if you're a defensive coordinator and you see this and you got to get a stop, and they get six yards on the first one, you're going, man, come on. I am just so impressed. Look, look at tonight what they're doing. I'm so impressed with their running game. And, and we show the running backs numbers and the quarterback there, but so much credit has to go to that O-line, uh, tight end blocking, wide receivers blocking downfield. What a great team effort of running the ball. Two tight ends in. Barber gets outside and gets the first down. Out of the 31-yard line. And, and there it is right there. Just talking about the line. Tight ends. That was Matt Spate that time. Six, a 6'7 six, kid. 265 tight end. What a fantastic block. Look at this. Again. They're high, 356 against Louisiana Lafayette this year. You don't run for 300 yards this against is, Michigan. This is, this is amazing. Barber needs five to have a new career high, which is 173 against Louisiana Lafayette in 2001. He sat out almost all of last year with a hamstring injury. Abdul Talik intercepted, and this will be a touchdown for Jacob Stewart. The reserve safety. Sophomore from Ypsilanti, Michigan. And it is a very different football game right now. Well, we've talked about it all night. He had done such a great job of staying away from the bad play. He told us yesterday he has to live to punt. That time, he tried to make something happen when there was nothing there, Mike, and it cost him. Kalik, he's in the grass. He still throws it late. 
Boy, you're so right. Living the punch should have been the, the mantra there. He's in the grass trying to make a play. And the extra point makes it a one touchdown game with 13 and a half minutes left. First interception of the year for Stewart. And you guys talked about it. The rap on Abdul Khalid is that he is prone to making the big mistake. He hasn't done that this year. He just did there. He's falling down and he throws the ball out where when you can't hang a ball up toward the sideline. And he does that, and it's the thing that we heard about. He did that last year. He hadn't done it this year. Three or four plays a game killed him last year. He did it tonight, first time. And that's when a quarterback needs to know what's going on around him. Rada was first and 10 there. Yep. You know what? Take the sack. Yep. Even take the sack second and 16, okay. It's first and 10, and you're up two scores. No need to try and make that play. That, that, that's someone who has to take in everything time on the clock down in distance where the play's going isn't breaking down that's one that you know he'd love to have a string on and pull that one back well he's got to play the next play now yep, exactly he's got to right. let it go there was the first career interception for stewart he brought it back 34 yards for the touchdown a chance to run back the kickoff for maroney and he's tackled at the 24 by roy manning Biggest college football weekend of the season. Miami, Florida State, and Oklahoma, Texas on ABC. Georgia and Tennessee on ESPN2. And Ohio State and Wisconsin on ESPN. Separation Saturday. All day on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN2. Uh, Georgia, Tennessee. Tennessee just get rolled by uh, all. Everybody's running on Tennessee, and I, I didn't think that would happen. Much like people are running on Michigan tonight, Minnesota better. Stay on the ground with Lawrence Maroney. And he's out to the 26-yard line. Going back to that Georgia-Tennessee game, do you think? I, I happen to think Georgia is probably the class of that conference right now. Yes, they, I would they agree look that. that way to me. Yep. I would agree. I mean, if Tennessee can't stop the run, they're going to have a lot of trouble with Georgia because Georgia can throw it. Casey Clawson said he thought this Tennessee team he was on was the best one he had been on. And, uh, uh, they, they took it on the chip. Now Marion Barber again gets the corner to the left. That's been there all night long. First down out near the 40-yard line. Jacob Stewart again made the play. 13 yards for Barber. And that should get him to the new career high. Surpassing the 173 he had against Louisiana Lafayette. Two years ago, he has 181 tonight now on 18 carries. Great job, great run, but where's the adjustment? Where's the adjustment? Left side, every, every time they go left, it's big yards. You've got to adjust to that. You've got to understand where you're getting beat and adjust. Now, again, give the credit to Minnesota for blocking and running, but there's no one touching them to the second level. Adjustment, get off the blocks. <laughs> boy, boy. There's Maroney back in there. They just keep running fresh legs at you all night long. Out to the 46-yard line. Let's check in with Alex. Sean, something that has been hammered into Michigan defensive players' head, heads is a motto by defensive coordinator Jim Herman, and it's called Get the Ball Back. And he made these little stickers, Get the Ball Back, GTBB. They are on all defensive players' uh, playbooks, and they are constantly reminded of this. The goal is to get three per game. The most they've gotten is two. They could use a couple more tonight. And Jim Herman said that's been his biggest disappointment with the defense this year has been the lack of creating turnovers. They got a big one a moment ago on the interception. To pay near the first down, out near the 49. Well, they're having enough trouble tonight just getting in position to make the tackle. You know, they got almost a gift by uh, Abdul Kalik in the last series with the turnover. As far as creating other turnovers, I mean, they're, they're doing all they can to get in position to make a tackle. A very big third down and inches here near midfield. Gotta get it going. They got eight on the play clock. So Philippe looking to the sidelines. Took a long time for them to get the play in. They snap it with one. He has the first down. He's going to score. Touchdown, Minnesota. Assad Abdul Khalik, 52 yards. Do you think 
Mikey said, I'm going to make up for the bad play I had last time. That was going to be a speed option, but he just picked the hole. He just took it, said, I'm going to find the hole down the line somewhere. Everybody starts flying out of there. You get to the second level. Nobody there. I know. Wow. Minnesota brought everybody up. There was no second level at all. Reese Lloyd adds the extra point. Well, every time momentum seemed to turn against them tonight, the Golden Gophers have responded. Longest run of his career for the senior, Abdul Khalik. And it's Minnesota again by 14 points. Well, running 52 yards, apparently not enough exercise for Saad Abdul Khalik. He jumps on the bicycle on the sideline. All right, stay here. With, stay with me here on this. Watch this replay. Okay, Mark Sederson gets the cutoff block. Watch Reed, the linebacker, overrun the play. That creates a huge opening in the middle. One linebacker overruns it. Another linebacker gets cut off, Mike. There's your touchdown. Again, a great job by the line. Position blocking. That's all you got to do. You don't have to blow anybody off the line. You just position block. And by the start of that option, you get people running on out of there. Abdul Khalid saw the hole and took advantage of it. We talked about his judgment and decision making at the line of scrimmage. Carl Tab runs back the kickoff to the 25 yard line. We'll mark him out of the 21. And he did a great job at the line. because you can see, he looked up, saw nobody there in the middle. Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator, said Michigan moves around late. Right. More than any team they play against. He said, but all Abdul Khalid will need is one or two steps, whether it's in a drop or an option, to see what the defense is, and he's smart enough to react. You know, we said he had to play the next play right. after the pick. Yeah. I think he played the next play. I would say he did. Great call. And when Michigan got back in the game, they're down by two touchdowns again with 11 minutes left. The screen's been a great play for the Wolverines tonight. Perry. Out to the 34-yard line, tackled by Ben West, the former walk-on from Appleton, Wisconsin, who grew up a Minnesota Viking fan, even though he was in Green Bay Packer territory. His mom is from Minnesota. Ben put on scholarship after two years in architecture major. That is hard. Boy, that saved him about fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars getting the scholarship a year. He said if he didn't get it, he would have left. He yeah. said I was at the point where I was going to have to go to a smaller school and try to play. You know, costing my family too much money. He's nuts. I mean, he, he, he's nuts. I mean, he's he's one of these walk-ons that throws his body everywhere. Talking to Greg Hudson, the D coordinator for the game, said he's got a bad shoulder, bad knee. He said he won't miss a day of practice. He tells the trainers to leave him alone. He said, I am not missing a practice. I will not ever miss a game. Ben yeah, told us the real reason he came here. He was going to go to Wisconsin, but his girlfriend, Aaron, was a year older than Ben is. She was already here at the University of Minnesota. Isn't that always the way? Follow the woman. Yes, yeah. and it's a smart move because she's going to be a doctor. Well, she's going to med school next yeah. year. <laughs> he's, he, he, he's not nuts. <laughs> I guess he's not nuts. He's nuts. He's not stupid. <laughs> and he will throw his body anywhere. Navar throws into traffic. He's lucky to get away with that. Steve Breston with two gophers right on him at the 45-yard line of Minnesota. And despite all that scoring we had in just a couple of minutes, there's still a lot of time for Michigan. There's no reason for Navar to take a chance like you pointed out this time. He didn't have to throw in a coverage. He's got plenty of time in this ballgame. They get one more score, the pressure goes back to Minnesota. Right. Second and ten. Out of the shotgun. He got away from the rush and then airmail Breston, who was well covered in the flat by Justin Fraley. Paul Nixon put the heat on John Navar. There's Nixon, the fifth-year senior, who came as a defensive back and is now a 250-pound <laughs> lineman. They missed him at 240, but the coach has said he's closer to 250 now. DB to DN. You don't, you don't see that an awful lot. Third and ten, just a three-man rush for Minnesota. 
And a completion for a first down. Preston couldn't get away, but got 13 to move the chains. Now that was a clutch throw. Yeah. Clutch and, throw and catch. And that's the thing about Navarre. He has the arm strength to do that. It's just the accuracy at times that hurts him. He, he has a gun. Mike Wojciechowski finally made the tackle a backup cornerback. Another former walk on. He's a junior. Navarre going deep. Has a man open. Touchdown, Michigan. Braylon Edwards. You know, they may have criticized John Navarre, but you have to respect his competitiveness. He has not given up on this ball game. He keeps coming back. He makes another strong throw. He's a great deep thrower. He, he does throw the ball well deep. When, when he's on with that, he is on. He, re, he runs right by. Well, we talked about him being. Banks. Yeah, we talked about him being that hot streak. He got hot, and look where they are right now. That's a 52-yard touchdown pass after the 52-yard run by Abdul Khalid. Revis, the extra point. And once again, Michigan back within seven with a long way to go. 10-18 remaining at the sold-out Metrodome in Minneapolis. And the field here is kind of paying off. I think I can get that old thing memorized. Now. You got it down? I got it down. You need the card that time. Troy Meenberg kicks off. Lawrence Maroney has it go over his head and out of the back of the end zone. Well, great protection because only three guys are rushing, and this was not man coverage. It was a zone, a three-deep zone. Right. But Edwards just outran Banks. He ran. Sometimes we talked about this last week, Mike, how zone coverage at some point becomes man coverage. Right. And the guy runs by you, now it's man coverage. That's it. It was. Raylan Edwards wearing the number one on the fifth player. Several other Michigan greats who wear the number one. He went and asked for it. Boyd Carr said, you got to prove yourself first before you can have the number one jersey. Well, he's got it now. Well, Minnesota has responded all night tonight. There's Barber turning the corner again. He shoved out with a first oh, down wow. at the 31-yard line. And then he went up and over the bench. Now on the Michigan sideline, here's Reese. All right, Sean, over on ESPN2, South Florida quarterback Ronnie Banks has been sacked nine times. So Jim Webb against TCU puts Ryan Fisher in there, a punt returner receiver by trade. He scrambles around and finds Florida transfer Elgin Hicks for the touchdown. The Bulls within three, and they've got the ball back halfway through the fourth. Getting hot in South Florida. Wow. We'll see South Florida a couple times on Friday Night Football this, this year. Halloween night, we're out there. And Cincinnati is the Green and James oh, Street. Grant Bowman made the tackle on Marion Barber at the 35. And the clock will run under 10 minutes left. Bowman, a senior from Columbus, Ohio. He's been a leader on this Michigan team. Most yards they've ever allowed rushing is 421, 1968 against Ohio State. Minnesota with a great chance to get that tonight. Yeah, I was going to say that 421 is in jeopardy. But uh, I, I'm just amazed. Second and seven. Marion Barber again. Tripped up at the 37-yard line. He'll need about five. To Moved the chains. Again, it was Bowman who made the tap. Sean, they weren't letting him get around the left side that time. <laughs> that time they came up the field, said, you're, you're going to have to cut it back this time, and Bowman was able to come over. Did a nice job. Bowman from a great athletic family. His sister Allison was an All-American swimmer at Northwestern. His brother Aaron, a football water winner at Army. And it's been a mainstay. Today is his 21st career start for Michigan. Third and five, and a flag thrown along the far sideline. Ball start, offense. Five yards, third down. We're at the Metronome in Minneapolis. 
Minnesota fans have been billing as the most important game played by the Golden Gophers since 1960. That's the last time Minnesota was 6-0. And they lead number 19, Michigan, by a touchdown with eight and a half minutes left. Michigan just scored to get within a touchdown. On third and ten, that pass nearly intercepted. Marcus Curry made a quick move on the ball. And a punting situation for the Golden Gophers. Well, well, well. <laughs> Are you implying we have a situation developing here? There is a developing situation, yes. <laughs> well, now if you're Michigan, you don't have to stay with the no huddle and throw on every down. Nope. But why would you change? That's an interesting thought. You, that, that's what was working for you. Do you stay with it or do you go back to the conventional offense? Which didn't do anything for them in the first half when they did not score. Reese Lloyd, a tumbling punt. Fielded on the run by Breston. He is dangerous. And they finally get him on the turf at the 40-yard line. A 44-yard punt and a 15-yard return. A lot of score in this quarter. First, there's Abdul Khalid going on the long run on fourth down. Navarre says, we're going to go a long way as well, but we're going to do it through the air. To Brendan Edwards. That was a 52-yard score, the most recent score that got them back within a touchdown. Now the crowd trying to help the Minnesota defense. First and 10 Michigan from their own 40. They do throw. Over the middle, it's Breston. Tackled by Brian Smith, the reserve linebacker. And there you go, still up at the line. No huddle, Sean. Talked about that, and I think Minnesota needs to start playing a little tighter. But you know, just because they're going no huddle, they don't have to give up on their running game. They're, things are in their favor right now. They've got some momentum. Here's Perry, has the first down. They gave him forward progress to the Minnesota 48. Eli Ward belted him back. First and 10, Michigan. Glenn Mason said at halftime, he told Alex, hey, he told his team, there's no quit in Michigan. Expect these guys to come back in the second half. They're back. Well, can the bar continue to make big plays or will he make a costly mistake? Perry oh. tripped up in the open field. Very nice tackle by John Pavilski, a backup safety. He's a sophomore. Boy, what a nice job because there was a lot of room to run. Comes off the block of Avant, skates through the two linemen, and goes low. That was a big play. Pavilski, another former walk-on. Moving along the line, but no flag. Navarre throws he was very nearly across the line of scrimmage but no flag down and Braylon Edwards takes the ball to the 31 Brian Smith the tackle first down Wolverines and John Navarre is showing some skills yes, he is I mean he showed some pocket presence he showed an ability to throw while he was on the move and to put it there accurately if their fans are media think this guy's a bad quarterback they're nuts Six forty-five left, and that is almost intercepted. And I was reserving the right to change my punt. <laughs> Justin Isom broke it up. That's the thing that but, brings him the criticism. Well, the criticism is he'll play great, and then when the pressure's on, they get him at the right spot but, but make a mistake. It's all about the big game, though. Look, look at the, the, the hook that Chris Sims had on him at Texas. That he couldn't take the big game, couldn't win the big game. You get stuck with that when you're the quarterback of the team that doesn't win the big game. Like you're the only one out there playing the big game. Yeah, that's, that's exactly uh, right. That's, that, that's unfair. I'll take it. Chris Sims. It is fair. He shouldn't have thrown that ball. Mm -hmm. There are three red shirts there. He should not have thrown that one. Isom well, couldn't hang on. That would have been a huge turnover, obviously. Perry's open in the flat. The linebacker, Smith, trying to catch up to him. That's a mismatch. Perry. Down inside the 10, but they're going to mark him out back at the 13-yard line. Boy, Navarre's got that throw down now. He missed it on the fourth and one earlier in the half. He gets it out there, gets Chris Perry in stride. There's only one man out there for Perry to beat. Nice one-handed grab. Perry takes it to the corner. 
That's the ninth Out reception for Chris Perry at 16 for the season. Those second half numbers for the bar. 23 out of 29 for 274 and two touchdowns. Edwards upended. Well played on the corner by Yuki Dozier. Dozier, another veteran player, junior from Bradenton, Florida, who lost his starting position in spring ball, but earned it back in fall camp. Talked about Perry because I have a feeling we'll get another pass to him. The 16 receptions coming in today was already a career best. Player. Yes, it was. The single season high. Now he's 25 for the year. Six minutes remaining. Second and seven, Michigan looking for the tying touchdown. From the 10, the deep handoff. Perry walks in. Touchdown, Wolverines. Now that was the Chris Perry that we saw the first three weeks of the season. A great cut, and he accelerated out of it right into the end zone. And what a change on the sidelines, the Michigan sideline all going nuts. The Minnesota sideline, I would say stunned at what has gone on. Minnesota had a 21-point lead. Now just the extra point to tie the game, and it is up and good from the freshman, Garrett Rivas. A great night for the Heisman candidate, Chris Perry. Michigan back even with Minnesota. Four touchdowns in the fourth quarter for Michigan. Still 548 remaining. They've come from three touchdowns down to tie the game. In the 100th anniversary meeting in the Little Brown Jug Series that dates back to 1903, when Michigan came to Minneapolis, Michigan riding a 28-game winning streak under Legendary coach Fielding Yost, he was worried about whether Minnesota would provide untainted water. So they brought their own water in a jug, and they left it behind after the game ended in a 6-6 tie in 1903. It ended before the game actually was played to its completion because when Minnesota scored a tie at 6 with a couple minutes to go, their fans stormed the field, and the officials stopped the game. Michigan, over the previous two and a half seasons before that game, fellas, had outscored their opponents 1,631 to 12. So you can understand why the Minnesota fans rushed the field when they scored. Michigan sent a letter. He said, we'd like our jug back. They said, you're going to have to win it back. And in 1909, the next time they met, Michigan did win the jug back. And they've been playing for that jug ever since. And Glenn Mason has never seen it because his team hasn't won it. Great, great storyteller. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> How about that season? They were the only team that scored against Fielding Yost's team. That is unreal. That's 6-6 six, six time. Oh, well, you know what happened. They were looking forward to Ohio State there. Uh, looking ahead, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Even back then. Let's see if Minnesota can respond again. They didn't get a very good kickoff return, only to the 14-yard line. And Thomas to pay. Goes out to the 17. The little brown jug is in that hamper under lock and key. And then reports that some years Michigan didn't even bring it with them. No, and you know something? I bet in some years they probably painted the whole thing Michigan blue. Now they figured they'd never give it back to Minnesota, so just paint it blue. Well, this crowd is flat now. They're stunned by this fourth quarter rally by Michigan. Option, Abdul Khalid. Out to the 21, but they'll need three on third down. Lamar Woodley made the tackle. Grant Bowman also in on the play. Well, not playing from ahead anymore with that running game. Now Michigan can creep up a little bit because certainly Minnesota hasn't had, hasn't had to show show anything in the passing game. Oh, you know the throat is getting a little bit dry oh, on some man. of the Minnesota players right about now. Play calling very, very key right here. Very conservative so far, as you could understand, starting at the 14-yard line with a team that doesn't throw much. Abdul Khalik lofts it up. Great effort by Aaron Hosack, but excellent coverage by Marcus Curry. And it'll be three downs and a punt for the Golden Gophers. And everything going against them right now. You called that. You called that they would be looking for that, Rod. Six foot five. 
Austin going against 5'11 Curry. Size advantage. Curry did a nice job. Yeah, he did a great job. And he got his hands on him. Kept him from getting to the spot that he wanted to get to. And now, oh boy. Big punch. From Reese Lloyd. Steve Preston. He's been averaging 17 yards per return for the year. Best in the Big Ten. Forced back to the 25 after a booming punt. But he brings it back to the 42. So that's right on his average of 17 yards on a return. Nice punt by Lloyd. 56 yards. Separation Saturday continues tomorrow. Two games in prime time on ESPN2 at 745. It's number 10 Georgia taking on the 14th ranked Volunteers of Tennessee. Then a 9 Eastern on ESPN. The third ranked Buckeyes travel to Madison to battle Anthony Davis and number 22 Wisconsin. There are seven Big Ten teams in the top 25 this week. I don't know about you, but I got my ESPN game plan. Oh, yeah. I'm not moving oh, tomorrow. Yeah. It's also available as Ohio State Wisconsin in stunning high definition TV on ESPN HD. The pass through the hands of Preston. Second and 10. Kyle McKenzie had the coverage. If you'd like more information on Separation Saturday, as always, you can log on to ESPN.com. Yeah, I know what I'm going to call you as every game finishes tomorrow. I got my honeydew list going. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can have honeydew list, but you can't have it on a Separation Saturday. You can have it every other Saturday. Well, if he doesn't do the honeydew list, it could be a different kind of Separation Saturday. Yeah. Second and 10. Pass caught for gain of five. Jason Avant out near the 46. John Pavilski made the tackle. And another critical third down here. Lloyd Carr's offense has been unstoppable here in the fourth quarter. Talk about separation Saturday. It's leaking over here to Friday. Minnesota thought they were separating themselves into the national scene tonight with that big lead. All of a sudden, we have a big game. A screen pass if you're Minnesota. Chris Perry takes the handoff and appears to have the first down. Boy, Very near hard. the yard marker at the 48 of Minnesota. Man, he ran hard on that one. He sure did. He's done that all night. He's rushed now for 77 and had 111 yards receiving. This will require a measurement. It's hard to tell. Sometimes when the tip of that ball doesn't get all the way to the far end of that line, they're short. That's I thought the best it, hedge I can do under the circumstances. I'm just going to say I think he gets it. I think he has it. Because if I'm wrong, who cares? I'm always wrong. Does it really matter? <laughs> well, we've heard your radio show. We know. Oh, hey. I said he's a little short, I think. And he oh, appears boy. to be short. The referee, Steve Payton, looking down. Wow, what a decision now for Lloyd Carr. If you don't get it, you give them a very short field. On the other hand, your offense has been dominant, but it's been dominant throwing here in the fourth quarter. But you know something? My defense, if I'm Michigan, has been playing better. I kick it away. You got 320 pound linemen. You got a 6'6, 240 pound quarterback. There is no doubt I run a quarterback sneak right here. I kick it away. I kick it away. I break the tie with Mr. Golick. I think you go for it. Everything's on your side right now. All right, if you miss this, you can go home. Game over. Oh, come on. No. Oh, yeah, I, I'm going to have a short field if I'm Minnesota. Yeah, you still have to score. You have to move the ball. Timeout called by Michigan with the play clock. Winding down. One timeout left for the Wolverines with three and a half minutes to go. Pulsating action here in Minneapolis. A short time ago, this woman was limited by her mobility. A month ago, this man wasn't even able to get around his house. These are people who chose mobility, and they chose the scooter store. If you're living with limited mobility, call the scooter store today. I guarantee no other company will work hard to make you mobile. If we pre-qualify you for a new scooter or power chair and Medicare denies your claim, the scooter store allows you to keep your scooter or power chair at no cost. That's the scooter store guarantee. 
I expected they'd help me file some paperwork with Medicare and my insurance. I never expected them to be so nice or to work so hard to get me a power chair at no cost to me. You don't qualify for Medicare? No problem. We'll work with your insurance company, even help with financing. If there's a way, we'll find it. Call the Scooter Store for free information today. Call 1-800-862-5700 for free information. That number again is 1-800-862-5700. Back in Minneapolis, Minnesota has led virtually throughout. They had a 14 to nothing lead at halftime, had a 21 point lead in the second half, 28 points in the fourth quarter. Michigan in a tie game with fourth and inches and going for it at the Minnesota 48. Going over the center. Oh, now they're going in. He's and the bar got it. Yeah. As you said, this big line, Mike, and a 6-6. Six -six Sturdy quarterback like Navarre, you can't get that. No, I mean, it, it, you used to be able to walk up to the line and say, guys, we're running the quarterback sneak. All, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You win for it, you got it. <laughs> we're not rubbing it. So I would say, head. Mike, there is no question in that situation <laughs> to summarize. <laughs> and going for it is the right thing. The trip agreed, too. There was a landslide. Navarre back out of the gun. Over the middle, it's Avant, and now they're inching toward field goal range. Their longest field goal of the season is a 47-yarder by the freshman Rivas. They're in about 50-yard field goal range right now after a gain of 14. Deep dropped by the linebackers right now, and they're throwing right underneath it. Watch Rivas kicking before the game a little bit. He was hooking him just a bit, kicking more line drives. First and ten, Navarre with all day to throw. How about coming after him once or twice? That one's incomplete again with very little rush. So if you're in Minnesota, might you want to change it up a little bit? Well, I, I think normally you would. I think they're a little bit concerned that the bigger, stronger, more athletic wide receivers are out leaping their guys down the field well, and running you, by them. And they don't want that matchup. I'll tell you what else they're concerned about. You blitz a linebacker and Michigan runs their 40th screen of the night, you're in trouble. <laughs> See, for a lot of screens, and if your linebacker's caught running up the field to the quarterback, you could be in trouble. But you can mix it up other ways. I mean, you can play zone and bring some a little bit more pressure up front. 2.51 remaining. One timeout for Michigan, three for Minnesota. Perry stumbled as he took the handoff and got a yard. But that's it. It'll be third down and nine. And the clock runs. Here's where you need a play call. You're either going to go for field goal position or you're going to go for the first down. That's a decision to make here. This is this is what's been going on with Navarre. What kind of throw does he make in these kind of situations if they go that route? I think as hot as Navarre has been in the fourth quarter, you let him throw that deep out, that corner route. Let him throw. Four receivers. Screen, Screen again, and it's there again. Perry down the sideline. Tackled at the 22. It's a first down for Michigan with 2.06 left, a 10 yard gain. They caught Minnesota with a stunt. Well, bringing their linemen inside, yep. and everybody just slipped out to the right. Now, what's going to happen here? Michigan's going to run the ball. Minnesota's going to start using their timeout. Yes, they should. They're going to they're gonna have to leave some time on the clock. Michigan, I'm sure, is going to go for uh, go for run the clock down, go for a field goal. It's Perry, tackled by Bavilski as he got inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. I'm with you, Mike. How about a timeout, in Minnesota? Time's not a problem for Michigan. Got three timeouts, and you're letting that clock run. It's going to be down to almost a minute if he burns I don't it all the way down. This at all. You know, you let yeah. the clock run out. We go back to the end of the half when they were content at 14 nothing, boys. You yep. Maybe they'd like to rethink that too. Well, the fans now are starting to get pretty upset here. I don't understand this at all. Well, they're going to let it run down and burn their last timeout. Michigan is. Yeah, Lloyd Carr says, thank you very much. We're content to let it keep running. Absolutely. What are you going to do if you're Minnesota? Let them take it down to zero and kick a field goal when you have no chance to respond if they make it? Wow. 35 all with just Kevin Frazier. Those stories you saw on your screen, including Kobe Bryant speaking about his situation. 
Here's Perry. Oh. Lost the football. And it looked like Michigan got it back. Tim Massacoy, the tight end, recovered it. There was also a helmet that came flying off. And Massacoy got it at the 14-yard line. Sorry, I yelled, John. I got caught up in it. I don't blame you. <laughs> Everybody in the stadium yelled. Great hit Great by Eli, Eli Ward to yeah. knock that ball out. Now a timeout called by Minnesota. But they let a lot of time go off before the previous play by not using a timeout. Wow. That was a big hit. And Massacoy was hustling on his block and wound up in the right spot. Otherwise, that ball bounces to Minnesota. Yep. Well, they got themselves lined up for a nice chippy field goal here pretty soon. Davis has had a good year. We mentioned five out of six taking field goals this year. Along the 47, he's got plenty of leg. Right now, it'd be about a 30 or 31 yard field goal. Glenn's got to be in shock. We're looking at Glenn Mason. He, he's just got to be in shock. His team just ran over all over Michigan tonight, yet he's about to possibly be beaten by a game ending field goal. Funny thing happened in the fourth quarter. John Navarre. Absolutely right. What have you done for me lately? 0 and 6 against ranked teams on the road. You know what? No time like the present to go ahead and change that. If Michigan wins this ball game. Navarre may have saved their season. Great point. Well, by their own admission, everybody we talk to the Michigan side said we lose this game, we can forget about the Big Ten, which is one of their few remaining goals. They were thinking even bigger than that before losing two of their previous three games. They were down by 21. Now they're just content to take a knee, avoid a disaster, keep it in the middle of the field. And that gives Minnesota a chance to use a timeout with 51 seconds left, and it all goes on the shoulders of Rivas, the 18-year-old. They wouldn't have any timeouts left, but they'd be about a minute and a half on the clock. So here's the freshman Rivas to attempt a 33-yard field goal. And that is right down the middle. And Michigan leads for the first time tonight. With 47 seconds to play. All right, let's spin it the other way now. Now, Deanberg has been kicking the ball out of the end zone a couple of times. A couple of times they've been getting a return. So first we'll see what kind of return we get. And remember what we talked about as we take a look at this good field goal here. The leg of Reese Lloyd and what he did in practice kicking 60 yarders. So you have a couple of timeouts, not a ton of time. Let's see if they can get a return at all where where they would need to get for a 60 yard. If you did it in practice, you'd need to get to Michigan's 42 yard line, 42, 43 yard line. So that's kind of the area we're looking at. They've got the one timeout and they've not had a lot of success getting the ball down the field. Right. The ball game, Minnesota, I'm talking about. So they're going to have to come up with some plays and only 47 seconds in one timeout. They likely pass plays with an offense that has thrown the ball very little this year. They've thrown 14 times tonight. That's their average pass attempts per game. Abdul Kalik is 7 out of 14 for just 64 yards passing. They have rushed for 406 yards tonight. I hope we do not see the squib kick. I can't stand it. This kid's been booting him out of the end zone. Let him kick the ball. Troy Neenberg booting it. Into the end zone. Moroni let it bounce. So Minnesota starts at the 20. They had to be dreaming about the celebration to come, the step forward that this program would take with a win over Michigan for the first time in 15 tries. It's still possible, but it's certainly looking a lot less likely than it did when this quarter began. Yeah, and Minnesota really played an excellent game, certainly, uh, and then give Michigan a ton of credit, obviously, for coming back, but 31 points in the fourth quarter. And if Minnesota's to lose this game, guys, it's going to be again. We're just a little bit away from being with the rest of the big boys, and it's a shame because they played so well. It's got to give Michigan all the credit in the world if they make this a comeback. Defenders dropping deep. Abdul Khalid. Got it off, incomplete to Barber. He did a great job to flip that ball forward. Grant Bowman and Lamar Woodley putting the pressure on Assad Abdul Khalid. Here you see them dialing up the pressure just a little bit more. Lamar Woodley 
56 is coming inside. It's a three-man rush. There's no way they should be having pressure. Yeah. They rush three again. He has time. Throws for Barber. He's tackled after a gain of seven. And the clock will run. Except they will call the timeout now. If they had waited, they would have lost a lot of time while they went to line up. So 33 seconds left. No timeouts left in the third and three. All right, the first down, you'll stop the clock on the first down. If they don't get out of bounds, it'll stop until the change are set. Time to get up and either do a kill play or run another play. This is now when you're getting a few plays from the coordinator. Everybody's got to be on the same page in the huddle, so if you have to hurry it up, get up there. I take the shot down the field now. You do it now? Yeah, because most guys are going to play for the first down. They'll play for the first down, take a shot to get a little bit further down the field, not a four or five yard out or whatever to get you the first down. But go ahead and take a shot. You're going to come back in fourth down anyway. Yeah, you're going to have to make a play in fourth down. Take a shot to pick up a few yards. Because if you don't get anything here, you may not have enough time if you make a ball down the field, running people down the field trying to line up. You might not get a chance to get another playoff. And you still do, in my opinion, have the middle of the field to work with. Right, because the clock will stop on the first down. You see Michigan, they're playing that three deep across the back. They're going to hang back and say, you catch anything you want in front of us. So they got the three back here. They're going to say, we're just going to hang out back there, do whatever you want in front of us. Aaron Hosack, one of Minnesota's best receivers, is on the sideline with an apparent leg injury, so he's not on the field. Abdul Khalik has the first down, has a lot more. Abdul Khalik now with a chance to get to the sideline. Flag down for an illegal block right at the end of the run. And it was Ellerson. And he just needed. He's done that a couple of times tonight, and they've been killers. Another one that they didn't need. He was on his way to the sideline. Well, now, okay. But it'll, it'll be a spot foul, yep. will it not? So it'll go back, still be a first down. But at this juncture, to lose that uh, field position, you're out at the 50-yard line. Definitely big. During the run, illegal block in the back, above the waist. 10-yard penalty is still first down. Oh, he, he there it is right it. there. He didn't need it. Doesn't he was already by him. Yep. He did not need the block. He's Don't already by him. Look at that. He's gone. Oh. The ball back on the 35-yard line. 23 seconds left. Three-man rush. He has time. Throws into traffic, and it's incomplete. Batted down by Roy Manning. 18 seconds left. Jared okay. Ellerson, who just committed a penalty, was the intended receiver. Again, you can still do the middle like that because it would be a, a first down and stop the clock and get to the line. Oh. Went through Manning's hands, and then it ricocheted off the leg of Ellerson. What a position Minnesota's in right now. They have to be just stunned. Right now, the field goal by Arrivas, the difference. Minnesota would like to give its first-year kicker a chance to tie it. Again, a three-man rush. He's hoping for an answered prayer as it's thrown up and intercepted at the 13-yard line. Marcus Curry picks it off, and Michigan in a memorable comeback will defeat Minnesota shattering so many of the dreams of these Golden Gophers. I'll tell you what guys I take my hat off to both these teams. Fantastic job by Minnesota getting the lead they did running the ball and then for Michigan Glenn Mason told Alex at halftime that, that he told the team guys there's no quit in Michigan. Well, how about he's absolutely Lloyd, right. Yeah, Lloyd Carr said he was going to tell his guys at halftime it's all about the little brown jug. Yep. And that they'd play the second half for that. And they played for their season. They did. In the second half of this ball game because had Michigan lost this one, you could have kissed it all goodbye. Be a lot of tears for Minnesota. It's a horrible, horrible loss for them, but there should be a lot of shaking hands there because it was an excellent game. And Michigan will retain the little brown jug. Minnesota for the 15th straight time. They scored 31 points in the fourth quarter and won despite giving up 424 yards rushing to Minnesota. 
Our final score, Michigan 38, Minnesota 35. Coming up next at Sports Center with Kevin Frazier and Scott Van Pelt. We'll have more from the Metrodome coming up within Sports Center. Now for Rod Gilmore, Mike Golick, and Alex Flanagan, Sean McDonough saying so long for a moment from Minnesota. Here it's hands back on the little brown jug, and then they went and had it taken away from Michigan. What a game you saw. It certainly was a heartbreaking defeat for the Minnesota Golden Gophers, but you have to give Michigan great credit with their season seemingly crumbling all around them. They came back with 31 points in the fourth quarter. Let's head down to the field. Alex Flanagan's with Michigan coach Lloyd Carr. Coach Carr, this is the biggest comeback in Michigan history. 31 points in the fourth quarter. What happened? Well, I think, you know, it begins with an unbelievable group of kids who refused to give up. And, um, I, you know, I want to... It was a tremendous football game. It's, a, it's one of those games it's a shame anybody had to lose because Minnesota played their hearts out. So, uh, But we're, we're delighted because we've had some uh, ups and downs, and our guys never stopped fighting, and we got a great group of guys, a great group of coaches. Speaking of those ups and downs, you talked about coming into this game. You wanted to hang on to the chance of the Big Ten title. You've done that by winning the little brown jug. How important to you is that? Well, every game in this conference is important, and particularly for us because we lost last week at Iowa. Uh, this gives us a chance to stay in the race for another week. John Navarro often criticized, especially for not being able to win the so-called big game. How do you rate his game tonight? Well, I'll leave that to all the critics. Final question for you, Coach. Minnesota did a tremendous job running the ball throughout the entire game. What happened defensively? Why was it so hard for you to defend against their run? Well, first of all, they're a great offensive football team. There's no doubt about that. I, uh, they're better than I thought they were, and I thought they were very good. And, um, you know, it, uh, it starts with that. And we'll have to look at the film, but obviously we gave up too many big plays. Uh, but... We never stopped fighting on defense either. The last two times they had the ball, we found a way to.